Welcome everyone, this is FIDE Women's Candidates Tournament 2023. The finals is here and we have Lei Tingxi against Tan Zhonggi. In the yesterday's game, Lei Tingxi managed to win the game against Tan Zhonggi and now she's leading. Here we are once again, commentary team of uh, former, former Women World Champion Alexandra Kostinik. You guys know her as Chess Queen and myself. Women Grandmaster Katie Tazalashvili. Hello, Alexandra. Good morning, Katie. Let's take a look at the uh, other games that happened previous days. So we had here the victors, all the games for white pieces. Tan Zhonggi won her first game. Then Lei Tingxi um, equalized the um, result with the victory. And then we had a peaceful draw. And when we came back from the rest day, Lei Tingxi converted the victory. Alexandra, what you can recall the most important moment from game four? Well, the most important moment was the last moment uh, Tan blundered, uh, but uh, there were several critical points in this game. And uh, probably Tan would disagree with me and would say that the most important point was the moment where Lei blundered and Tan had an opportunity to lead the match again, but she didn't feel the momentum. She played uh, too fast at this uh, point and um, yeah, didn't notice this nice tactical shot that she had. That's a good point. Uh, as you have mentioned that Tan Zhonggi blundered before Lei, Lei blundered, so it was very very sharp game with a lot of ups and downs let's take a look now head to head score uh, which has been changed uh, as we can see now in the classical portion the match is tied four to four and they have played 10 draws in the classical portion overall standings which means that there are classical games rapid games and blitz games tan is still a point ahead just to point ahead, uh, the main reason that they have played so so few tournament, so few games, is that they have been played as a teammates at the most of the tournaments. Alexandra. Yeah, well, it happens sometimes. You play more, you play less against uh, uh, a player, but uh, even though they might not. Uh, play many games against each other, but I'm sure they have some insights about each other since, as you mentioned, yes, they do play uh, together in uh, in the Chinese team. They actually are born in one city, and uh, that's the city where the match is taking place, uh, Chongqing, and uh, that's an amazing achievement for the city as well to uh, raise uh, two players of such caliber. And uh, right now it's a big celebration, should be a big celebration, for the locals and we should also keep in mind that the winner of this match is going to play the current women's world chess champion uh Zhu win june and that match which is going to take place in july this year uh also half of this match one part of this match is gonna uh, take place in the same city and the other part will be played in shanghai the city of uh, Zhu win june so a lot of chess going yeah. on in China, even though they didn't have an opportunity to travel abroad lately. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, they are in the chess mood. They're ready to play. They're ready to fight. And let's see what we can expect before in the game number five. That's right. So no matter who wins this match, Lei Tingzhi or Tan Zhongyi, the match will be at those two locations, as Alexandra mentioned. So uh, it is very interesting that we do have a classical time control. Let's take a look at what we have here, the format. Uh, 19 minutes for 40 moves, and then the players are getting 30 minutes increments after they reach move 40. And so far, this has been a little bit of issue for the uh, both of the players, mostly for Lei Tingzhi as we have seen some of the games where she had a few seconds on the clock and it was move 30, move 38, like before 40 moves. And um, uh, she needed 30 minutes of the increment. And of course, the players are having 30 seconds of the bonus time from starting move one. Alexandra, 
this a lot of people or our spectators now can just think that this is a lot of time how it's possible to get seconds on the clock uh what, what's your thought do you think this is most decent time control here and why we still see the time issues for the chess players on the clock i, I think we've discussed uh uh the time control uh, already throughout this match. There are actually a lot of topics that we touched upon and the time control included. Uh, we can always argue. Um, well, we're kind of used to this uh, feed the time control already. It's been introduced a long time ago. And before, I mean, there was like a lot of discussion uh, whether it's a good time control for classical chess or it's a little bit on a shorter side and we do see as you mentioned a lot of time trouble right so players are struggling to make those 40 moves and um, again we can argue whether for world championship match another time control should be applied a more like serious one a, a longer one that's gonna uh, have um, uh, that's uh, got the players of uh, the upcoming overall world championship match Nippon in the mid are gonna use uh, but as I said I mean uh, we mostly in women's chess we mostly use this feed the classical time control we're kind of used to it and yes time troubles sometimes are very hard to avoid but it's a part of the game I mean you cannot uh, think for 10 hours over one move right it would be uh quite uh boring mm -hmm. and i think it just like uh, uh good yeah. enough good enough to play a decent game and uh, good enough to have um, quite uh, some time in the opening in the middle game uh, may not be enough for an end game but okay that's life you need to adjust you need to get ready and you need to play your best speed up a little bit in the end that's right alexander let's take a look now at the format once again for this event and you guys we have six games of the match and the winner the player who gets three and a half points will be the winner and as alexander mentioned earlier will face the current one world champion Ju Wenjun in July this year. Now let's take a look at the playing venue as both players are now at the board, uh, very focused, getting ready. We have a lot of cameras inside the playing venue. Uh, and uh, uh, also we have seen uh, footage, uh, the photo in internet, Alexandra Warren, uh, Tan Zhonggi and Lei Tingji after game four were uh, interviewed and the photo is so um, so nice to see the smile and the laugh on the face of these players after the decisive game uh, and uh, yeah that also uh, shows the spirit of chess players they are very focused uh when they're playing they don't smile at all they are fully concentrated and then when the game is over they can smile and just be uh, back to normal life and now we can see lighting g uh, on the camera alexandra what are the chances oh hold on yeah. what is yeah, this it's a small giggling there yeah <laughs> Kind of weird, a weird I just thing. said actually, that they're so photo... focused and not smiling and she just gave us a beautiful yeah, smile. Yeah, so kind of. And these photos that, yeah, you mentioned and uh, you sent us yesterday um, with them smiling, it still gives you quite a weird feeling because usually you expect a player of, of such, you know, high level match and stakes are so high and we've been talking about that to be at least quite sad after losing such a game with so many blunders and True. yeah and here they are smiling and laughing well it's good <laughs> uh from one side but from another like it makes you wonder um it makes you wonder right and um well yeah, anyway well, the most important is what they feel if they feel happy let them smile because in the end of the day one of these uh, players will get 60,000 euro and the right to play the world championship match and here we have the handshake and the arbiter has start the clock. Ah, the first move is a D4. Yeah, D4 sad feeling Zhongi. for me. 
I said feeling no e4 game so far yeah i feel match. really sad with that because re you really wanted to have some e4s here in this match and so far we have seen c4 and d4 only exactly exactly and what do we see in this game well we see some very <laughs> um shy move let's put it this way e3 uh, white is closing the bishop on c1 straight away, but they opening the bishop on f1, and why this move is made in order to have this pawn protected. So no queen's gambit, guys, in mm -hmm. this game. And, um, well, of course, you cannot really hope for a big opening advantage after such uh, mm, Quiet That's moves very as E3. Move. Yes. Yeah, such quiet moves as E3. So probably Tan didn't feel like uh, competing in the theoretical discussions part with Lei. She feels that her best chance might be in time trouble. So she just needs to keep pressure uh, to um, wait uh, till chance comes and it might come most likely closer to the first time control so yeah just a quiet movie three and let's see what uh lay uh had prepared uh because well you still need to um be ready for this kind of setup because if she uh, was uh, uh focusing her home preparation on d takes c4 um that means and somehow connected her uh, further play with uh playing c5 uh as we saw in the previous games then the move e3 might be a nice um, like waiting move because okay here black for example can play c6 but then uh she won't play c5 right she can uh develop her bishop to f5 but that's gonna lead to some other move orders and transpositions to different systems that lay might not be, I mean, ready to play. Uh, so, yeah, not the most ambitious move, but um, but now it's Lei's turn to demonstrate um, what she uh, she's about, what she 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 will do here. Yeah. Now, uh, E3 is something that we don't see very often in the games where you are with white pieces where you need to win. Because guys, if Letting J wins this game, the match will be over uh, as she will reach three and a half points. For now, she has two and a half points. Tanjongi has one and a half point. So Tanjongi is in a situation that we cannot say that she's in must win situation. Draw can still keep the match going on, but then the last round she needs to win with black pieces. So you don't really expect anyone to play the movie three, not very ambitious move uh, to gain some advantage. But Alexandra, this is still very tricky. It's very tricky because uh, if now Lei feels like, okay, she saved the opening a choice of Tanjongi is not very ambitious and it's just equal and it's like easy draw for her. Um, this might uh, get us into serious complications because White still has some tricky plan, which is connected with playing in the center to get the knight on e5 and also some kind of kingside attack later on. So let's see, do you expect in this position some complications uh, that usually this opening can bring or you think that it will be a long game and we will go to the end games? And well, game too, early, too early to say, right? Still a little bit too early to say. Um, a few moves uh, have been played. So e6, Black decided to play. So it's like uh, the players are playing um, some kind of... Um, Queen's Indian with the color reversed with an extra temp again the same approach that Tan actually chose in the first game when she opted for the English opening and she was playing uh, like the Sicilian with an extra tempo. There are uh, approaches like this in the modern chess it makes your head turn all the time because you kind of try to imagine the same position but with the color reverse mm -hmm. so let's let's try to do that but it's always so hard um so hard to do so if it's like uh, d4 knight f6 right c4 e6 knight f3 d5 
and like e3 um and then uh, b6. b6 but the bishop is already on d6 that's the tempo right that white is having yeah. yeah this is um the semi tempo and kind of okay we should keep that in mind but you always wonder what this uh you know half a tempo really gives to you okay let's see it's a college system it's called on chess.com rubinstein opening mm -hmm. um, uh it actually has mm -hmm. uh, uh, a lot of names as well and our chat on twitch is well aware of this all this system uh, i have to admit that i also like to play three sometimes when i don't mm -hmm. want to go in very deep theoretical lines because white still has a plan here and white plan is to uh, develop the bishop on b2 <laughs> develop which supports, the, <laughs> right. supports the knight on e5 mm -hmm. then you develop your knight on d2 you castle mm -hmm. you play knight e5 and f4 you right. get this knight in the center then rook f3 rook h3 some mm -hmm. rook lifts the bishop on d3 targets h7 pawn so uh, yeah it's quiet but if the yeah. opponent feels too relaxed you can get something out of it right right can be quite poisonous i agree with you we do see such uh setups in many of blitz games nowadays i'm sure if you like look in databases you'll find dozens of games okay the first games that i see i mean i looked in my database now i see Ferruja carlson and just to give you an idea that you know this uh, move order this opening is being played on many levels uh, but of course there are many blitz games uh, games with faster time control and it's like a very easy setup for uh white right that uh, katie just uh, mentioned you just develop your pieces you have this uh, attacking idea pillsbury idea you want to put this knight onto e5 and try to go all in yeah there can be there can never be enough arrows <laughs> I like that too. And Alexander, I like the choice of Tanjongi. Very quiet uh, setup, but still with the flying. Very sneaky idea too. Uh, and we might speculate that uh, Leiting G uh, was not necessarily expecting this move because after E3, she took some time and she wanted to to coordinate her pieces properly. Uh, very likely, you are usually getting ready what has happened before in the in the previous round and we had a tarash and it was quite uh, quite sharp but both of these players knew the theory quite well and now in this position it's less theory but more of the ideas and more of the setups right so yeah um, yes definitely and uh, that's exactly what tan is aiming for i think i don't know when i see this kind of opening and i see that even though you know white played e3 on the uh, third move and black replied with e6 back uh, like closing this bishop somehow i feel that white already got what uh, they really wanted to get um because it mm. feels a little bit weird to close your bishop um i don't know you always want to develop it but it's more like psychological thing i think because mm -hmm. Well, anyway, White closed her bishop on uh, by playing e3 as well, but she had time and now she kind of developed it to b2. And uh, Black still um, is gonna uh, need to decide what to do about this bishop. Well, probably b6, uh, bishop uh, b7 later on in the game, but uh, is she gonna have enough time to develop uh, this bishop like that? Uh, I'm gonna see. Yeah, that's interesting. Another interesting uh, setup what we might have here is to play bishop e d6 here from mm -hmm. uh, from Lei Tingxi. Uh, and after castle, black can castle, knight to d2, and queen to e7. So black is aiming to push pawn e5 and then trade all the pieces off the board. So that's queen why to white e7. has to play knight e5 now. You should not allow black to play e5. And after okay. knight e5, you can yeah, go queen. Uh, queen c7 is not played because of d takes c5 and bishop takes f6 or what is the reason um with yeah 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 you, you might uh, have this damage pawn pawn structure but queen e7 actually has very interesting idea because mm -hmm. after knight e5 
Uh, this is pretty much forced, actually, if you don't want to allow e5. C takes d4, e takes d4, and bishop e3. Bishop a3 can e3, be the idea. Yes, it's, That's uh, the idea of queen e7, in fact. That's the idea that one can often see in Queen's Indian, where white plays queen e2 and try to exchange this uh, light squared bishop in that case. But here, yeah, it's the same... Um, well, same opening basically with just the colors reversed, but we do see some moves. And black decided to take on d4 to exchange this pawn. Mm -hmm. um, not really, the, well, I mean, uh, this uh, move, uh, this decision is often connected with the fact that black doesn't want to be disturbed after bishop d6, for example. If she plays bishop d6 immediately, then white can take at some point on c5, right? And this bishop is obliged to move again, and that's not what black wants. Now, ah, I wanted to say now they're ready to develop the bishop to d6, and that's exactly where uh, lay plays g6. Wow, this kind of move. Oh, uh, g6. Yeah, this kind of... It's a little bit weird, right, to see, I mean, Whoa. usually if you play e6, you don't really see the pawn going to g6 immediately. It's just like even aesthetically look at all those uh, black squares. There are just too many, it seems, uh, weaknesses and uh, it's just a little bit slow. Whoa, so this is so weird to my eyes, Alexandra. First thing what I have in my mind, what if we just castle here and after bishop g7, like this ugly move, but bishop hey, A3. I can play bishop a3, yes, yeah, stop mm -hmm. castling. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not that like uh, unpleasant here yet. Maybe there is knight e7, but you want to say that there is knight e5 coming up then? Could be, yeah, could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, might be, I mean... I totally agree with you that it's kind of a weird feeling to see this g6 move. That's not, I think, the move that you normally see in uh, this move order, in this opening. Uh, I mean, anything is possible, right? You can even play like that and hold the game after this move. You know what I'm thinking? Maybe after bishop a3, well, bishop f8 doesn't seem to be right, right? Because no. after bishop f8, you can just exchange, probably. Although, okay, let's see. And the king goes to g7. Maybe it's not that bad. She probably has something prepared here, because bishop a3 is such a... such a logical move. Yeah, this is, this is actually possible. This is actually possible. Uh, to play. Well, you don't have to, right? You can continue your game with uh, your plan. I don't think that the bishop on g7 is such a big problem. Although, yeah, with the bishop on g7, this kind of attack, right, that uh, you just uh, talked about with uh, rook lifts and... Um, I mean, it doesn't look that uh, scary anymore, right? Because this pawns this pawn chain is exactly against this bishop and those ideas of four f5 so it doesn't look that tempting to go for it and to play for this attack um there are some some games in the database uh i can uh i can actually bring up one uh, one game which has happened in chinese league mm -hmm. um and uh, so after g6, uh, white castled, black castled, rook to e1. No, no, wait, wait uh, bishop g7. Yeah. Castle, bishop g7, right? Yeah, castle, bishop g7. Um, castle, rook to e1. Uh, no, black no, point no. bishop g6. g7, it's white to move. Oh, sorry, let me take a look. Bishop g7, uh, knight to... D2. D2, yes, knight to mm -hmm. D2. Castle, rook e1. Castles, rook to e1. Uh, b6, a3, bishop b7, knight e5, rook to c8, and f4. Mm -hmm. So that's what white wanted. But after rook to c7, white goes g4. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> so that's like, and after Queen C8, then C3, and at some point in Fimus, White even went to H4. So that is yeah. total madness to me. Queen F3 yes. mm -hmm. and King G2 and H4, something like that happened. Well, Maybe yeah, but draw. this is a very double edged, right? When you're moving up your pawns uh, from your king, uh, like so bravely, you should uh, really, I mean, keep attention and realize that the pawns they don't go backwards, and that means um, that if one day the position opens up somehow, why f six e five, then you, your king might uh, be. <laughs> might end up in a big trouble so really gotta be careful with this pawns moves but nevertheless the players continue the game uh indeed white castle bishop g7 and now you're gonna see what Tan has in mind whether she's gonna try to stop black's king by playing bishop uh, to a3 well in that case probably uh, we can expect something like bishop f8 although well i'm not sure what actually should be done after bishop e3, what is the best move for uh, black here, because bishop f8 seems a little bit weird, right? Normally, um, if you put your bishop like on the sphere at the square, you don't really want to exchange it. It's a side who is playing against this bishop, trying to exchanges so after bishop of eight i can just simply uh take on f8 and i think this exchange uh, favors um favors white mm. so and sure. if you just ignore it kind of hard to ignore such a bishop you really want to castle so not sure what uh, black is gonna do yeah in the database alexandra after mm -hmm. bishop to a3 there are a few moves for black played knight to e7 uh, for obvious reasons to castle another move is 94 i don't like that yes uh, probably 94 i see that the computer suggests this move but Ooh, this also i mean bishop looks a3 quite... on the board let's right, go yes. let's see what latency yeah. has written, now uh, let's prepared. see because 94 is indeed the computer uh, suggestion but to me i mean it looks really like risky black is suddenly starting to move her knight again okay she put some pressure on to d4 right but i'm even not sure that black can take straight away because for example if i like play rookie one and black takes there is this discovered a check and the bishop is hanging and of course you cannot really i mean you should not take with your bishop because then the black squares are gonna be just yeah. too bad no, no, not possible to hold. Yeah, in in these games that I I see right now in database, F5, black responded right? with f five. So this yeah. is uh, uh, very ambitious uh, from black side to get the center right away, not to castle, and that is uh, a very interesting approach from Lei Tingzhi when she is not in must win situation for her. To... Well, first of all, she didn't play knight e4 just yet, but okay. Yeah, that's why I she mean... might not play this move because. But what else? What else then? It's very hard to give uh, um, some other alternative. What else to do with the bishop on a3 not being able to castle? That mm -hmm. is a problem because you really you you feel like finishing development, and if the bishop is on a3, how can you do that? And if you uh, play knight e4, f5, it's indeed, I mean, it seems very risky. Maybe the computer holds, but oof, playing with your king in the center, it just, it means, I think after this move, it means it's, <laughs> it's going to be there for a while. And uh, white's main um, task now going to be um, to open up the center somehow try to get to the skin right but in order to get to the skin you really need to uh, like do something in the center to try to open the lines to somehow attack this knight and the only way to attack it like the only decent way to attack it um, would be to push it with the pawn right but in order to push it with the pawn you need to move your knight somehow 
somewhere away. But this night is protecting the spot. So it's kind of, it's a very, very concrete decision for Black to go like night E4 or 5 computer-like decision, I would say. I mean, it's so mm. unhuman to my eyes because the king is in the center. Why do you want and to play in such a risky style. But now I don't know if it's possible, whether it's just, uh, if there are any other decent uh, alternatives. But because as I said, Bishop of Eight, I don't like it at all because I think it favors uh, white, this exchange. Uh, the black squares are gonna be there. They are weak mm -hmm. and this Bishop is stuck uh, there behind uh, its own pawns. Knight E7 seems too slow and it lets white knight get to e5 and it just takes away the control over the central squares and there are no other moves to suggest really i mean you should do no. something about we the have in only the three moves here that has been also played knight g8 knight g8 <laughs> is in the chat what about knight g8 knight 7 yes. in the castle well, she That's did It's actually play so pretty. 94 wow. has been played. Um... I'm impressed. <laughs> I don't know. To me, it's this kind of. Oh she has very... to stop playing like me. <laughs> no. <laughs> this might lead her again, again in problems like yes, yesterday. Well, Alexander. 94 remember? is the first computer move, right? It's, it's remember a... this move B3 that I was so obsessed. She played and it was the biggest. Well, you blunder. had a very uh, good plan, <laughs> right? A positional plan. Yeah. Uh, in my intent, uh, well, here, well, here is something very fresh to my eyes, at least 94 indeed, guys. Yes. Yeah, so, so, you know, when we like try to teach chess to kids, we always say, okay, you shall not move uh, your develop piece uh, twice in the opening, or at least you should try to avoid it. And, uh, but in this exact position, there was no way to avoid moving your um, developed piece uh, twice in the opening because here Black was uh, encountered the situation where, well, they had to do something against this, um, uh, well, not really against this bishop, but the only piece that is not developed is this bishop, and this bishop is stuck behind Black's uh, pawns, and, well, but 94 still, wow. Pretty active. Pretty active, knowing that your king is in the center, but again, uh, black is playing with a fire a little bit and saying, okay, I I mean, stay with my king in the center, but what what are you going to do about it? How are you going to um, open up the position? Because I also have some pressure on your center points. You also have to keep this in uh, consideration and... Uh, well, I don't care really about mm. your bishop on a3. Alexandra, I agree with that. And uh, I was like, while you were analyzing this, I was checking the games. And one of the first games that I can see in database with 94 has been played in 1982. Uh, Tigran Petrosian played with white pieces against Sunni Neto. And here after 94, c3 has happened to guard the pawn mm -hmm. on d4. And F5, like this was before the engines, Alexandra, and people were still playing these crazy things, 94 and F5 with king in the center. Then uh, Tigran Petrosian went to bishop B5, bishop to D7, mm -hmm. queen E2. And um, in these uh, lines and also the other games, uh, it is a bit surprising for me that white is giving up the light square bishop for the knight, C6 mm -hmm. knight, and then trying to get on E5 with the uh, mm -hmm. white knight. The game ended right. in a draw, but it was a uh, quite sharp, sharp game, double-edged uh, position for sure. Yeah, and actually we can expect a very, very sharp uh, encounter right now because the position, I mean, oof, it can explode. It can explode. The king is in the center. And yes, white indeed is going to try to uh, somehow get closer to it. C3 is... Uh, uh, more like a positional approach, yeah, just trying to protect this pawn, trying to release, I mean, somehow to strengthen the center. But of course, there are some games connected with um, c4, so something like bishop b5, bishop d7, c4, some crazy stuff like that might happen. And um, here, black, uh, white's plan is simple just to capture on d5, play 
rook e1, then knight c3, and uh, try to attack this knight on e4. Why not? Something like that. And after a6, I think a6, of course, is uh, Black's idea. And here I was thinking about bishop a4. Uh, it looks a little bit like risky to put mm -hmm. bishops like this. I just don't feel like giving up my bishop straight away. Um, it doesn't feel so, I mean, strong, right, for white. But okay, some ideas like this can uh, happen. And um, whether um, black is going to be comfortable with the king on e8, well, we'll see. Yeah, that's a that's a tough question to to answer. Uh, in the game, Alexandra rook to f1 to e1 has happened, mm -hmm. and Tanjongi is hitting the knight on d e4. Uh, mm -hmm. As we have seen, f5 is a move. Another move that Black can also play is knight to d6 to uh, cover this diagonal and then castle next move. However, this knight will be here pinned for some time. Yeah, I was. I'm thinking about something like Queen D two. Does why it has? Does why it have time for this? Because I mean, with the idea to play Queen F four, but I was not sure about Knight takes D four here, because we always, of course, have to check as it's possible or not. But now I'm thinking maybe just give it away, play C three. Okay, queen f4 also to be considered, but play something like c3 and queen f4. So in other words, I just give up this pawn, but I manage somehow to open up the lines, right? And my main idea is not to let Black's king slip away and to put some pressure on this knight. So Sounds that... re really, really pretty to sacrifice this pawn and somehow to open up then the, the files white uh, can uh, maybe play knight d2 next move to develop the uh, queen side as well uh, and uh, it's gonna be a little bit tough to open e file or d file but uh, white might yeah. have some time for that too. yeah so i want to say that i don't think that black has time to play knight d6 <laughs> Because, uh, well, the knight uh, may be well placed there, right? The knight d6 square in such structure is usually a good square for a knight. But here it just seems a little bit slow. A little bit slow. Um, f5. So f5 is just... Uh, there are not so many uh, other options, right, for, for black to play because as you... <laughs> Notice the knight is under attack, and uh, really there should be something that black. Um, not much of doing. the not much of the choices. In fact, yes. five has been only only move that has been played. But ninety six is is the uh, is the idea that can be uh, suggested. What we can see today, Alexandra, is that um, from the very starting. Uh, they are taking their time from and think, think. So it's not something that they have prepared with their coaches and they are in home preparation. No, they are actually uh, uh, in, investing some of their time and coming up with these ideas. For sure, they have seen these lines before because otherwise you would not risk to play G694 in F5 here with Black. Um, uh, but... Where I'm going is that I kind of have a feeling that today we might have heavy, heavy uh, time scramble situation. We might, but I would disagree with you that it's something new for the players. No, I because... don't say it's something new. I said that they did not expect it. For sure, they have seen these well... positions. I don't. I'm not. I have seen this position, so I would. I will never dare to say that someone has. Well, that's how I see it. Tan definitely, I mean, prepared something like this. Of course, she um, could not expect, right? Uh, I mean, I don't think she analyzed like every single reply for Black after like E3. But I mean, certain ideas she might have. And she's been playing pretty fast. Okay, she has one hour, 24 minutes um, on her clock. But it means that she spent just five minutes. Uh, and 
right now we're at move 10. Uh, while Lei, uh, Lei spent more time, but still taking into consideration uh, all those decisions, quite difficult decisions such as knight e4 and f5, so going for this line with g6, bishop g7, mm, I think she's, well, you maybe not, of course, she was not really 100% prepared for this um, opening but at least she had some kind of plan follow-up plan and uh, she so far i mean she's playing she she's been playing pretty pretty fast again considering all the facts and we've seen in the previous games we've seen in the previous games that lay tend to spend more time in the opening right she's always like falling behind mm -hmm. immediately after the opening but then then catches up yeah, that's what we have seen in all the previous games. The scenario is just, just like this in every most of the games, that uh, Tan is thinking then in the middle game and letting G is just uh, investing time in opening more. So uh, that's really, really interesting. It's not something that it happened one or two games. This is the whole picture of the match, Alexandra. Yes. Uh, so can we can we draw some some uh, uh, lines here that we might consider that Tan Zhong is well prepared in the in the openings, uh, and then Lei is uh, really, really uh, strong to set up her correct plan, and then she's getting nice advantage well i think they're both pretty well prepared in the opening it just uh, for me it's more like um an approach right of a player i mean we discussed it already uh briefly that some players tend to spend more time in the opening even though they might be very well prepared but they just feel like you know spending this time i mean getting into this uh play mood uh kind of focusing more like forgetting everything sometimes you even need to rest a little bit because you spend so much time like hours and hours preparing for different openings and then you come to play and your opponent surprises with you you with uh, something uh, relatively unexpected or something that you didn't uh, refresh your memories with or all those lines and you just feel like you know taking your time and um, getting into this uh, uh, right state of mind and yeah we do see f5 on the board and uh, now this pawn structure we're gonna we're gonna have it for a while uh, of course, White can at a certain moment play c4 and try to um, break through. But this knight on e4 is, even though it looks a little bit vulnerable, we can say, but it's so hard, you know, to attack because as I uh, explained, I mean, you feel like move, moving your knight away from f3 and play f3. But first of all, you should keep an eye on the d4 square. And second, it's not so clear where this knight from f3 can go. I mean, there are different lines like this where a black dares to put the knight on e4. And even though it like looks so, you know, risky in a way, but uh, it's not so easy to attack it nevertheless. It is uh, actually. It's not so easy. Here, um, you pointed out that the deep four pawn is, uh, is is hanging, and white cannot simply ignore that because black can get it. Black can get it and win a pawn and maybe a little bit more. Uh, so here at this point, white has to guard this pawn somehow. C3 is the move you can play, but then when you play C3, you need to spend extra tempo to guard C3 pawn because you cannot freely develop your knight on D2, this pawn is hanging. You need to play extra queen C2 move. And this gives back a little bit more time to breathe. Um, if you don't go C3, then you might want to move the bishop, like let's say bishop to f1 or maybe bishop b5 to pin the knight, something like that we might expect here from Tanjongi to be played. Uh, Black's plan 
should be connected. I mean, if you play bishop b5, then bishop d7 might follow. But basically, it should be connected uh, with uh, so-called artificial castle. So mm -hmm. king f7, rook e8, king g8, kind of, you know, avoiding the fact that the the square is on prise and you cannot castle. We know that one a side cannot castle via the attacked uh, square because a castle is a king's move. And so the king... Um, in his um, like road to the safety shall not uh, i mean according to the rules pass through uh, squares that are attacked and uh, it can i mean he cannot castle into a check as well uh, but nevertheless black can uh, castle via the white squares, right? So king f7, rook e8, and king g8. And again, uh, remember that you talked about this plan with knight e5 and f4 and all those kind of attacks. And here black first um, managed to put the knight on e4 and play f5. And that's, of course, uh, like pretty impressive to see considering the fact that the black king is in the center. But it's all about like... Um, right now uh, whether white is capable of exploiting this uh, this king in the center or not if not then black can certainly be more than okay if she manages to um put her king to g8 yeah that's uh, that's right um like is obviously playing to play king to f7 in artificial castle here what white can play to uh uh, to stop this plan and also to proceed the position because white needs to act very fast. Black's king is in the center. If black manages to uh, bring this king safety, then black has very good position. So I would suggest your bishop b5 move. And after bishop d7, what we have seen very often, white is giving up the light square bishop. So let's say bishop takes c6, bishop c6 and knight e5. We're stopping king going on f7. Um, and uh we are threatening f3 to kick the mm -hmm. knight off the e4 square which will then line up e6 pawn on on my on my list to attack if knight goes away knight f6 knight d6 then white knight will jump out from e5 square and the pawn on e6 is a weakness and we can attack this pawn yeah that sounds as a very reasonable plan um, I'm not sure what black is going to do. Maybe they can consider taking on e5 so this knight doesn't go away and it kind of closes uh, the uh, the e-file. But it's always double-edged and risky uh, to give up such a bishop, right? You don't really feel like giving it up. And um, uh, another idea... They that might be here and that we haven't uh, discussed even uh, yet uh, that black can still castle long right they can develop try to develop her queen and actually this move is not just a development but it's a prophylactic uh, against uh, f3 and pinning this pawn and then um... she can consider castling uh, queen side this is so exciting position. I would love to see this one. But Tanjungi decided to go c3. And mm -hmm. that's what we have on the board. She decided to guard the pawn on d4 with c3 uh, move. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, this is going to take some time uh, for white to develop the queen side because the pawn on c3 will, will hang. Do you, do you see King F7 coming up here next move from late in C, Alexander? That's a very interesting question because actually after King F7, the difference now that the King is on F7, right? So if I get to E5 with my Knight, it's going to be uh, with a check and there are no more Queen B6 and Queen side castle anymore. So if White gets back to the plan that you just described bishop b5 with the idea to capture on c6 and here they 
well, they almost force in a way black to take back on e5 because you don't really feel like going to g8 with your rook on h8, right? True. So it seems, and then f3, knight takes e6, is going to follow nevertheless. So it's uh, almost obliged to capture on e5, then you capture with your pawn, and we get this position. Okay, one more move we need, but probably uh, black uh, is going to play queen to b6. But then, but then, okay. Um, um, instead of queen v6, mm -hmm. uh, shall we go with queen to c7? Mm -hmm. And it was the idea after uh, f3 to play queen yeah, b6, right? Yeah, after f3, but queen d4? Yeah, I think that's the same, the uh, actually. After queen b6, that's what I was wondering. I mean, f3 is a very, like, it's a needed move for white because here this knight struggles, right? Finally, white was able to attack it, and because the king is on f7 after knight g5, it's going to be trapped. Why? Why the position is not oh, lost yeah. yet? Why the <laughs> wild bar? Well, yeah, it's it's pretty high. So yeah, so the knight is trapped, and the game is over. You got to be careful about this knight. So that's I think uh, what might happen after king f7, and uh, mm. that's why mm. white is just waiting. So and probably like taking into consideration this line black can also kind of wait she can play bishop d7 first right uh, keep the option of castling queen side in, in place um, there might be some other waiting moves but bishop d7 seems to be like the most logical one in a way hmm. interesting very interesting um position for this early morning for everyone guys <laughs> right. we would expect something more slower to go uh this is a good wake up treatment for us um and it is it is truly very early um what about you alexandra are you comfortable to play morning rounds by yourself well i like to sleep i mean i can i'm you know i'm this kind of person who I mean, if I ought to play uh, at like eight in the morning, I'm gonna play. I mean, I'm gonna, you know, kind of say to myself, well, you just have to do it and that's it. I mean, sometimes there shouldn't be any discussions, you know, because you kind of allow yourself to like brag on and to say, I, I don't want to play. I don't know how to feel. Then it's going to last and it's going to just make things worse. So, I mean, yeah. sometimes if it's ought to be done you need to do it and that's it no questions I'll just don't start this you know <laughs> bragging thing and um, so I can take myself well I mean I can order myself to do certain things and uh, but of course I mean if I have a choice I would prefer to sleep I like to sleep late and uh, that's always uh, like very a uh, hard thing for me during like a tournament if you play in a good hotel like in Munich we played and the breakfast there was great I mean you kind of feel that you need to go to have breakfast but breakfast finishes at 10 30 mm -hmm. and uh I prefer to be <laughs> to finish at 11 so I yeah, yeah if I have a choice I like to sleep yeah yeah that's that's actually true um very interesting bishop d7 has happened right mm -hmm. now and uh you guys this is gonna be very very interesting game that's what we have seen so far something new something very complicated players are not in their books they are using their own mind now to go through and this gonna take a lot of time from the players tanjongi on the screen very focused letting you just left the board Tanjongi in a situation to win. She needs to score a point to uh, get this uh, uh, match into the tie, tie breaks if she wants to still fight for the World Championship match. You guys, we're taking now our first break. The players are not taking any break. When we are back, we're going to see more updates and we're going to give you more insights of the games. Don't go anywhere. We will be back in a few minutes. Dude, it's impossible to not hear you just breathing super loudly. Um, okay, fine. I will hold my breath for three minutes. All right, let's go. Okay, let's go sure. Right now. Got the Ready? chess clock app right here. Almost there. 
And you did it. <laughs> uh, what can you do uh, for three minutes? Uh, my wife says not a lot, but I can plank. Keep that big butt down. Dude, nice. Oh, I did it. Two, one, you did it, wow. I feel better. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you were timing me? Yeah, you were in there for 30 oh, minutes. Oh, man. Let's Sorry. play some chess and get some dinner. Let's do it. Time odds? Yeah. Okay. You bring your clock? Oh, I left my clock at home. Dude, you idiot. I told you to bring it. Let's just go get something to eat. Okay. Oh. Download the new chess.com clock app so you can time yourself playing chess or whatever other dumb stuff you and your friends do. Welcome back everyone, this is Fide Women's Candidates Finals, Han Zhongqi against Lei Tingzhi. Lei Tingzhi is leading the match with one point ahead 
and if she scores another victory, she will be the candidate of the World Championship match against Ju Wen Jun. In case if we have the time, this match and we draw. Uh, happens then we're gonna have tomorrow another day where Tan Zhongki has to win with black pieces but we have third scenario as well if Tan Zhongki wins this game now today then we're gonna have tie once again and in the last round everything will be under no control so Alexandra what is the best scenario for you as a commentator of the event well, as a commentator, as a spectator of this match, of course, we want to see fight till the very last piece on the board, till Armageddon. We're always like expecting it, like anticipating it, right? So we want to have this thrilling finish. Uh, but, well, Lei should be uh, definitely against it. Uh, let's have a look at what happened. Uh, actually, Tan just played Queen to C2. I had another suggestion. As that I want to share with you. I mean, here we talked about the king being in the center and uh, how white should try, you know, open up all these lines to get to this king because if she manages to, uh, black's position can just simply collapse. And of course, c4 is the first move to consider here. Unfortunately, for white right now, right here, it doesn't work because of a very simple knight takes d4. And, well, knight is going to f3, the bishop is about to take the rook, and it, nothing really seemed to work here, because unfortunately, after bishop takes e4, I mean, with some ideas that if, in case black takes on f3, I'm going to take here, bishop takes a1, but I'm going to get, like, a, some compensation and try to create this evergreen masterpiece. But, unfortunately, there is a cold shower after D takes E4. The knight is protected, and the game is basically over. Black wins. But, but, everything changes. <laughs> after C3, Bishop D7, there is actually a possibility to play C4. Because, yeah, I lost the tempo, but, okay, Black made this bishop d7 move, which doesn't seem to be so helpful at this, like, exact position. And here, everything is quite different after knight takes d4, because bishop takes e4 is not losing. Uh, on the contrary, I mean, white is on a verge to create something very nasty. But, okay, it's all history. It's never happened. Uh, although, again, I will repeat again this. After bishop d7, c4 was definitely the move to consider. But don't play queen c2. And mm -hmm. after rook c8, so some... Some maneuvering so, to 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 make it clear, we mm -hmm. we said this, but we can once again rep repeat for yeah. those who just joined. Queen c two is now necessary to guard the pawn on c three. Otherwise, you can develop your queen side. And that's I mean, why it's preparing, right? It's protecting this pawn on c three and kind of freeing this knight up because, of course, white wants to develop this knight. Yeah, they want to coordinate the rook. They want to put more pressure on e four. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe uses uh, extra force um, when they're ready to play c4. So queen c2 with the idea of developing this knight on d2, protecting the pawn on c3. Rook c8, well, quite a logical move. And you see the queen on the open or semi-open file. You often want to have your rook you know, like looking at this uh, queen, creating all those x rays ideas for example if now black plays knight to d2 knight takes d4 right gonna mm -hmm. happen because of this pawn being pinned and well it's too bad for uh white and that's why tan uh, quite fast i must say she just retreated her queen away Ooh, and the gods a see? question mark <laughs> look at this one that actually wow takes me to understand why because i saw this question mark on this small screen guys we have a new feature here and it's gonna pop up hopefully soon because often because we are hoping to have some brilliant moves also some mistakes uh and some of the blunders because here we are for drama and we are looking for some chess dramas because we Ooh. just love it so alexandra sorry let's guys i just about... checked the engine sorry guys i i know the answer i'm sorry i yeah i ran before the train i know but i just I, it was so i was desperate to see the answer so I uh, don't worry don't don't yeah. apologize because i did it <laughs> you did it too okay cheater 
cheaters, <laughs> cheaters. <laughs> I did it already some time before. But let's talk a little bit about this, Alexandra. What we're gonna have? It gives us a good hint to check check out why Queen B two is such a bad move. According to the engine, this looks so natural. Tension can be played in a second. Alexandra will tell us why the engine tells us it's it's a it's a it's a dubious move. It's a bad move. But here we have the four categories, and um. I would I would ask the question tricky question which of these marks you guys want to see the most in this game <laughs> blunders I think blunders I blunders <laughs> <laughs> we're bad <Yeah>. people <laughs> yeah okay well. Alexandra why this is question mark move why this well is why emotion. let's let's figure it out i mean i saw the answer but why is it so bad you know still one requires time to like comprehend because it's hard to believe i mean again you know how chess uh has been taught for centuries you develop your pieces you castle king you fight like in the center right you try to control it and here black is doing completely opposite she's like uh moving uh, her pieces she doesn't care about the king in the center she just played a five and actually this brilliant move that needs to be played here is g5 Oh, I don't care. The king is in the center. You say, ah, oh, who cares? I'm going to play G4 and I'm going to checkmate you uh, or whatever the reason is. Together with the knight, I'm going to put some pressure on this king side and you're going to suffer until you take this knight and open up the F file and something else and huge uh, is going gonna, is gonna to come up. Wow. I mean, yeah, I'm speechless. Uh... I really, I need some time. Now, nowadays, you really need to somehow you know take a pause Digest. to like just to to understand to try to figure out how and why it 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 should be possible i mean white was doing okay right she was developing her pieces she castles she kind of uh, like supported her center she protected the pawn she's about to develop her last piece i mean everything seems to be so logically done by white and suddenly she's in trouble why is that? Yeah, <laughs> What's going on, it. guys? You know, Alexander, what I think uh, that this this moves queen to c to queen to b two, and you also have this bishop concentrated on the queen side. You are having too many pieces on the queen side squeezed, and if black comes up with this idea to g five, she doesn't necessarily need to play here g five. This is not the only move, right? She can still play at this point a6 b5 to stabilize the queen center and then king f7 g5 at this point so black has a plan to attack on the king side and white's pieces are on the queen side in in my opinion this is a move that gets the worst position for white because white queen might be stuck on b2 too far away from all the actions like Black can actually start very, very quick attack on the king side, and queen will be too far from this action. I think because the move that engine suggests is okay move here is queen to e2 to keep the queen in the center, which can easily navigate to the king side. And Alexandra, in this case, if we put the queen on e2, g5s will be less dangerous, or at least white has to consider some kind of knight d5, queen h5 check move. So. Uh, that's why here we have this uh, slight inaccuracy for white. Yeah, exactly. But somehow, you see, psychologically, uh, it was difficult for Tan because she was like focused on developing her knight from B1, right? She was focused on protecting mm. the pawn on C3. That's why, I mean, at first place, she went to C2, right? We explained yeah. that this move was kind of connected with like protecting this one because uh, otherwise you could have you know started with queen e2 and why to uh, play queen c2 okay maybe like the reason is to bring the rook to c8 to eliminate this idea with queen side uh castling maybe but still mm, that's why she uh, like uh played queen b2 she decided to keep the queen uh, protecting the spawn and she's willing to play knight b to d2 but it seems that it's the end it's indeed uh moves uh, uh in the wrong direction because um well it's too slow and even if she develops her knight to d2 it's not really attacking the knight on e4 right the only way to attack it is 
either to move this knight away and prepare f3 or try undermining this pawn, try to create some pressure over the e-file. That's why the move c4 it just was screaming so much and I was desperately trying to make it. Uh, but here it didn't work because of a very simple uh, knight takes d4. But okay, who knew? That's right. You could have... Um, like you, you, you could start with c3, bishop d7, and then c4. It's like very, very difficult unless you analyze this uh, position at home. Mm -hmm. And after, uh, well, a re relatively logical queen to c2 with like ideas that we can all re all relate to, uh, somehow the rook c8, queen to b2, yeah, the position might be uh, quite unpleasant for. White, uh, yeah, g5 uh, seems to be a very. Um, oh, it's. I, I th still think it's quite a hard move to make, but she's going to, for what, that. She what? just played g5. Oh my god, you scared me. <laughs> you scared, scared, scared no you. Way. Sorry, but this is, this is <laughs> insane. She just went g5. She is an engine. Oh my god, Alexandra, this is so sharp position. She's actually not scared at all to push f5, g5, just like that. Her king is still in the center. Wow. wow. You know what that might indicate? That Lei, even though I mean, she did spend uh, quite some time, but she's familiar with this position, with the ideas of this position. Mm -hmm. She might have analyzed it at home because, again, as I uh, already mentioned, knight e4, f5, this kind of a plan. Yeah, I mean, you usually don't come up with such a plan during a very um, important game. You should, uh, I mean, see it, analyze it. Otherwise, it's just too risky to be played. But, okay, G5 move definitely indicates that Lei knows something about this position or feels something. It's even better sometimes to feel the position, to feel the wipe inside it. And G5 uh, is the move. And, well, you know what? I mean, this game can easily become the last one of the match. So let's enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> let's enjoy our our moment oh well this look at her look how confident she is she is totally feeling that she's the one who is now um taking the directions of the move letting she and tanjongi Let's let's take uh, now uh, the moment to to understand how she might feel. Like Alexandra, she can't afford any more lose here after G five. Um, would you would you be if you were at her position? Would you be happy to see a move like that happening to you? Because <laughs> we're scared of moves like G five, G four, indeed. Well, it's I think it's a dream come true position for Black to get such a position in the match where, you know, nowadays in all those theoretical lines where Black desperately trying to equalize, to hold the draw, you need to memorize those, uh, dozens and dozens of theoretical moves. And here suddenly, I mean, move number 13, you have an edge and you're about to like burst with... Uh, uh, that, uh, an attack to your opponent, you're playing black and it's your opponent who is uh, completely unprepared who started the game with a calm E3 you know, try to avoid theoretical clashes as um, uh, long as possible and suddenly she ended up in exactly what she was trying to avoid uh, well, mm -hmm. G5 is on the board you can see it yourself Indeed, indeed. And uh, when we started this this game, who would imagine this kind of scenario? Because when you go third move e three, you are the one who is trying to, you know, slowly start the uh, control the center with ninety five, and then attack on the king side. And what Black is doing here is she's controlling the center with ninety four, just blocking the file and whole center, and she just pushed g five. Um, Actually, it started, Alexandra, for me to be a little bit dubious when she, late she played g6. Right, uh, but let's let's see what can uh, what uh, we can expect, what kind of lines can uh, happen, um, because what is the idea right behind this move? I think the main actual idea is quite positional idea, 
because we talked a lot about night B two D two, right? About why. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just wanted to ask you yeah, a yeah. very, very tricky question. <laughs> when I mentioned G six. Mm -hmm. uh, in that position, this is the move that we don't see very often. We were talking about that. Let's get back in there. Yeah. So when you play e6, you don't want to play g6 because you are weakening the squares. Mm -hmm. uh, she went for it and she challenged Tenjongi and Tenjongi went for it. Do you think this might was Leiting Ji's trap preparation that she trapped Tang to play Bishop a3 and she got her in the position which we have right now. Yeah, it felt like it, definitely. I mean, bishop a3 is such a tempting move, right? We, uh, I mean, all considered it, trying to stop uh, blacks from castling. It's indeed, I mean, it's stopping black from castling, but black just doesn't, I mean, care. Um, Lay just didn't, I mean, uh, it didn't pose her a problem to play with the king in the center and uh, you see a few moves later like five moves later she is the one uh, pushing her pawns up and trying to um, put pressure onto her opponent and there are some crazy lines possible now if uh, white insists on playing knight b2 g2 g4 and white can try to go all in and sacrifice a piece Ooh. Uh, because if uh, black takes on f3 and bishop d5 uh, gives uh, quite uh, good compensation for white, but unfortunately I think uh, black is going to take on e4 uh, with this pawn. And even though, okay, there is still some compensation, right? Because the king is still in the center, so after knight d2, black needs to play knight e7 in order to castle. And so some position like that can... Uh, actually happen again a piece down for white mm. with some compensation uh, doesn't feel enough this compensation and what's even more important is that when you are playing a practical game and you kind of calculate and you just sometimes you just don't feel like you know giving up your piece you see knight b to d2 uh, met with g4 and then you just go and try to find some um, other option to play Yes, and Alexandra, the thing is that if you play knight to d2, which is so logical move, then after g4, you're kind of forced to go to the peace sacrifice because where else you will play knight? Knight is stacked on f3. Uh, and let's just see this now on the board. Knight to d2, g4. And if you don't sacrifice the piece, then you have to give up the pawn. Knight e5, knight e5. Pawn takes e5 and bishop e5 oh, wait, wait, is wait, wait. actually wait. bigger advantage for black. Yeah, but okay, probably bishop e5 is the right move. I, I Queen just... h4 is on the on the board, threatening some checkmates. Bishop c3, knight c3, rook c3, anything here. Yeah, maybe seven. Oh, I would be <laughs> probably bishop, of bishop takes h2. h2. Yeah, and you were you would be right. Uh, the another very interesting line that, dem, uh, line that demonstrates uh, like what uh, I mean, white uh, can expect. Uh, knight f to d two. If I go mm -hmm. uh, with the idea to play f three, you know, we talk so much about this knight. Um, I mean, the plan for white to attack this knight being f three, but the problem for white is that black can continue with king f7, and if f3, actually this move loses, simply loses because of this knight takes c3, queen takes c3 is not oh. possible because of bishop d4 with a double mm -hmm. attack, and if you take with a knight, then black just simply takes on d4, and they can play knight e5, and suddenly all those pieces, mm -hmm. they are so discoordinated that uh, it's very hard to unpin and yes, uh, white can I mean, try to uh, play rook e5, but here I think even bishop takes e3 can be the answer, right? And then bishop oh, yeah. takes e5. Uh, everything is hanging on this diagonal and it's no way to survive. Completely, completely winning. And well, let's see what Tan is going to do because, oh, I wouldn't want to be in her place right now. G5 always so scary to witness. And if you're playing against it, 
<laughs> yeah, um, about being on her place, I would like to be on her place. Oh, really? Uh, not in this game, obviously, but talking about the tournament itself, this is the candidates' finals, guys, and the prize fund is huge. They have already guaranteed 50k uh, euro for these uh, games and uh, it is quite high price, you know, it's a lot of price here, but the winner, the champion of the finals will get additional uh, chance to get more uh, money and also to get the title. And that's what these two players are actually aiming to get. Uh, Tan Zhangi has already been the Women's World Champion in 2017-2018 years, but Lei Tingzhi has never been, and this is her biggest dream to become a Women's World Champion. So let's see what these days brings these two players and who will be the challenger of the current Women's World Champion, Giovanni. Yeah, Gio. and talking about this current Women's World Chess Champion, I uh, found the news today that... Um, she played in the first China Women's Chess Open Finals. It was a rapid tournament where Zhu and Jun participated, where Hoi Fine participated, 16 players participated. They played a round robin tournament. And Zhu and Jun uh, took the first place. Uh, she uh, took the first place and sh then she played a match against Hoi Fine mm -hmm. for the championship title. And she won it two and a half to one and a half. A four game match, rapid match though, Ooh, but huge. just yeah, just showing that Juvin Jun is preparing for her championship match, even though she hasn't played abroad since 2020. Guys, I haven't seen her play, I think her last game actually was against me in uh, <laughs> Lausanne. Let me check in the Grand Prix in Lausanne <laughs> where I struggled a lot, but I think it, we played. I mean, I played against Jovi June, um, and it was her last game since then. Have, have she has she played somewhere uh, like uh, abroad? Um, let, let me check it out. Not not the international tournaments, but she has been played online events. We were talking no, no, about no, online. That well, no, go. online. It's not really. First of all, it's a shorter time control, right? And then it's online. Yeah, she's played a few tournaments in China some leagues in China, uh, some uh, even the Chinese championship. Um, she's played in 2020 and 2021. But yeah, probably my game against her. Uh, I mean, internationally, she hasn't played for a while. And yeah, she's preparing. And on, yeah, that, that, that's actually a, quite an interesting fact. We didn't talk about it. We didn't discuss it yet. I haven't uh, touched this topic that the world championship match is scheduled to be in July, right? In just in three months. And it's such a short time to prepare. For example, imagine for these players, yes, for for Juve and June, it has been a long time, Alexandra, for these two for years. June, June, yes, but for traveling. those who qualify, for those who yeah. qualify now, like for Lei or for Tan, it's going to be just three months. Okay, we can always say, oh, well, those players, they haven't played a lot in the last three years and they have had all the time in the world to prepare. But still, <laughs> imagine like uh, Jan Nipomnish and Din Lejeune winning the candidates and then Fide saying to them, okay, guys, you're going to play the match in three months. Mm. <laughs> We're going to listen to their response with uh, uh, great attention. Uh, somehow, mm. yeah, three months don't seem as enough distance. But, okay, taking into consideration that those players, they uh, haven't been very active. And they uh, probably like uh, did work a lot on chess and prepared a lot, so they might they might be okay with the timing. They might be okay with the timing, and uh, also um, it's always good to to have the good balance because sometimes if you work too much, you might just burn out and you must just get very tired. Yeah, and that's exactly, I think, what happened uh, with Jan Nipomnishi before his first match uh, was against Magnus Carlsen in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, Katy? Because I was recording yesterday a few answers of mine uh, about the upcoming match, Nipomnishi Dint Lejeune. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you, how do you consider those matches? I mean, how 
do you think it's like needed those matches? Do you um, think we need to like respect this tradition of world championship matches and keep them going, especially considering the fact that Magnus Carlsen, for example, just lost his motivation and just um, is not going to defend his title, at least in this cycle? Uh, 100%. We need to have the World Championship match still for me and for many people. This is the main event because uh, Chess World needs to have a World Champion for sure. Um, and about Carlsen to lose the motivation, it can be the different factors uh, for, for him, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have other great champions for for instance i'm sure a lot of people are happy to see ding liren to have a chance to play at the world championship uh, match and Jana pomnishi who is already second time challenger of the world champion um but what well, i wanted that's... to say don't you think that the world champion just um gets too much uh uh like privilege right for example ju in june She's been a world champion since 2020 when she won against Alexandra Garachkina. The last mm -hmm. like, match she played was in 2020, in January 2020. So more than three years. And since then, okay, it's not because, uh, I mean, it's because of the pandemic and because uh, restrictions of living in China, right? That those players mm -hmm. faced. It's not only because of her decisions not to play, but she hasn't competed internationally ever mm -hmm. since so for three long years we haven't seen her and she's still a world champion and it's kind of she doesn't have to play if she doesn't want to she can just wait for all those players to qualify for a world championship mm -hmm. match then play it and then just play one more match and if she wins it it's another two years of uh, like preparing for another match so i just want to say don't you feel that this system somehow demotivates uh the champion uh, to play. Mm, okay, I see the point. I see the point here. Uh, um, well, first of all, if there is another suggestion to review the World Championship match or itself, the concept, it, I think it should be welcome and discuss should be open because some someone might have some great idea and maybe everybody would like it. Uh, but I don't actually see any problem because uh, at the same time, if not pandemic, period, if not these restrictions, she would play a lot of tournaments. She would play uh, open tournaments like she used to play. Um, I, as yeah, I, remember, I don't want to say that she I love men play. and all these like big events. She was not really worried to to play in yeah, those Yeah, definitely. Too. It's not against her. I don't want to say that it's her case, right? Exactly. But just theoretically, a world champion can just sit and wait for two years. Uh, uh, That's the privilege world champion that would not getting. Would yeah. not lose rating, would not lose anything. And, well, okay, um, he or she can gonna lose some money right prize money if she or he do, uh, don't play uh, doesn't play but uh, still i mean it feels yeah i understand this tradition and um i understand this desire it's like similar to me with a desire to play this perfect game you know mm -hmm. that we are mm -hmm. following every single um game we play we want to find this best move this perfect way of winning of converting and the same here oh by the way knight f2 d2 f2 king f7 f3 knight c3 you remember guys you remember the line so so something is in the air knight f2 is definitely made with the idea to play f3 but we know that this idea f3 is not working uh so, uh, so let's can see fire back with Mm -hmm. all the sacrifices in the center and that's because white's pieces coordination on the queen side look at these guys the board is divided into two parts alexandra <laughs> on the king side we have just solo king on on g file and the rook and on the queen side there is a queen rook stacked bishop aiming of on f8 square only on e7 to knights another knight and the bishop on d3 that's too much of the pieces and very often we're talking about to have space advantage by the pawns and here this is a cool 
demonstration what space advantage means but the opposite white has no space and the pieces are just stuck together and they are not even helping each other you might think they are guarding each other and helping but they don't and it's just so dangerous for whites i don't think it's a question of space here but rather of a question of putting yeah indeed too many pieces uh, on one side of the board, right? If we imagine even an airplane, right, with many passengers being like on the in the top of the plane, it's not like recommended. Uh, or in the boat, if you like put every single uh, passenger uh, like uh, in the top of the board, it's gonna like drop. And um, oh my god, it's the same here. So with the chessboard, you really need to find this balance, right, between uh, your pieces. You need to uh, yeah, talking place about them the plane, home, Alexandra. Home. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm so afraid of, of flights. You're afraid. I'm okay. freaking afraid of flights recently. I'm sorry um, to touch this topic. And once I've been approached to ta- to change my seat to keep the balance, and you can right, imagine right. me heard that I I have to keep the balance in the plane. <laughs> Nothing oh personal, God. but lady, you should move to the bottom of the plane. We want to keep the balance. Fifty kilogram person, fifty two. <laughs> has to keep the balance in the plane and my brain suddenly just you know fired and i was like what <laughs> and whole flight for three and a half hours i was i was not moving because i wanted to keep the balance breathing just <laughs> breathing I, was, I didn't even went to the restroom because like i was like keep the balance keep the balance <laughs> that was so so right. trick for me how about you are you also scared of the flights i'm scared but uh, i mean i just try thing. not to think about it again i mean there are certain thoughts oh g4 well i mean let's see and maybe it's kind of an invitation to play f3 and then knight takes c3 might work as well anyway because it's so tempting to play f3 right uh anyway it also opens up the a road for the queen. Queen h4 might be forcing some of the white's decisions. So it's a logical move, yeah. Queen well, h4 it's a logical, might be something. Yes, but um, what about all those sacrifices? I try to make them work, right? I try to, okay, forget about those pieces. Oh, what What was that? What was that? Aha! Aha! Something like that. Look, the Valbar. For some reason, I don't know why, but it jumped high. What's going to happen? Guys, what's going to happen? Why is it so in in White's favor now? Maybe just take, take Queen A3 and get the Knight on D6. Ah, wait. I didn't sacrifice a piece yet. <laughs> of course. Yes, that's why F takes, to, F takes E4 should be played. Of course, I just forgot that uh, we have the equal number of pieces. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, my idea was somehow try to, you know, complicate Black's life by sacrificing a piece, but trying to, I mean, the kink is in the center. The kink is still there. So even though I'm a piece down, but that's a piece for two pawns, and which is almost like, equal and it feels like black is playing with fire a little bit moving her pawns up so i mean those ideas they are in there just for white they she done should avoid playing f3 as we know right mm. because it runs to knight takes c3 but other than that i mean who knows why not give it up hmm. very interesting um there are some um some ideas not necessarily working right now knight f2 king f2 queen h4 and to go to pick up all the pawns on the king side it's just not working it needs a bit of preparation because alone only queen can't make that much of the damage but as white's pieces are mainly on the queen side it can be some kind of plan that they can just keep in the mind that there is a possibility uh, another thing, Alexandra, what I was just thinking, if white now passes the moves like knight f1 and so on and so on, uh, black has this extra idea as knight e7, knight g6 to get the knight on the king side. And that's going to bring an extra force into the attack. 
Yeah, but just 97 seems to be moving a little bit away from the center and I'm afraid to see C4 in that case because right now the knight is kind of, you know... After C4 we come back on C6. Ah, you mean like that? Okay, but... Mm. Well, anyway, that we <laughs> should... Uh, no, we should look at the white's move, right? To know exactly what what is the position we're talking about. In that case... But still, okay, tricky, yeah, c4, knight, c6, but kind of you always got to be careful with the king on e8 because, again, those sacrifices, they may happen, right? White may jump into all those, um, uh, they may feel like burning all the bridges. Uh, Alexandra, I have uh, this question to, to describe the position to our viewers. We have Black's king on e8, not castled, mm -hmm. and we usually say that the uncastled king is a weakness. And then we have the king on g1, which is castled, covered by the pawns. Uh, but this attack is so strong. Would you consider here Black's king in less danger than White's king, even though it's not castled? Uh, no, not in less danger, but okay. I think it's coming. Bishop takes e4. I think it's coming. Wait, wait. We'll see bishop takes e4 and then we're gonna talk about king safety. But is bishop f4, bishop e4 only move here? Like, can white... No, 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 no. But I just, I, I'm just waiting for it. No, definitely not. She can just retreat her bishop to f1, to e2, to uh, whatever she wants to retreat. Maybe she doesn't have this idea. She, knight takes e4 might not be connected with the idea of sacrificing, but it, again, I just feel so... Uh, especially when you're commentating uh, the game and you see this king on e8, it seems so tempting, right? But yeah, maybe she's just going to retreat her bishop to whenever, e2, mm. f1. Yeah, yeah, I got your point, actually. Maybe this is the momentum for Tanjong e to sacrifice the piece and finally to breathe a little bit and threaten some kind of d5. We need to do an so... open position. I mean, it's so scary. It's so scary to give up a piece because, again, yeah. uh, Lay is leading, right? Two and a half to one and a half. Uh, and you really need to feel the danger. Exactly. Bishop Ooh, of one. Bishop you F1. need to feel the danger of the position to go for such desperate measures because giving up a piece, it's not a blitz game. In a blitz game, I mean, I think every single chess player would just, yeah, hit on E4 here. And... Uh, Bishop of one, I think Tan is just, she's not feeling that her position is bad. Oh, hold on. There is yeah. another question mark here after yes, Bishop of exactly. one. Uh, the computer screams. <laughs> what is I mean, that? It's a mistake made the position worse. Uh, and it's so hard to, I mean, accept it because when I look at the position, if you would just show me the position and you would ask me to evaluate it, I would tell you, well, okay, the king is in the center, you know, on e8. Uh, it cannot castle. The position is about to be open. Well, something like in general. White king is safe. It's castled. Yes, white king yeah. is safe. Black, uh, white pieces are almost all developed. I mean, the pawn on g4, what is doing? I mean, on g4, it's hanging there. I can attack it and I can, you know, it yeah. feels. It feels. And as... what is this advantage here for Black? This engine is idiot. You are going through this process. If no, you no, don't no. If I don't know the, the evaluation, if I yeah. don't know the evaluation, and I just yeah. looking at this position without knowing anything, you know, without knowing the evaluation, without just, I would, I mean, I would not give uh, an advantage to Black. Uh, mm -hmm. A huge advantage. It's minus two. It's showing. I mean, something unbelievable. And the next move, it's even more hard to just h five. Chill, chill, and push your pawns up. Calm mm. and play chess, right? Do you, uh, do you see calm this coming, Alexandra? H five, because um, in the end of the day, they don't see the engine bars. They don't see these question marks and anything. Uh, but she needs to play with something, right? So Lei did say yeah. A, she played G5, she played G4. And I would not be surprised to see H5 because look at the position. What else can she do? And king F7, trying to get her king to G8, but it feels a little bit slow now, right? And taking into uh, consideration... To my eyes here, mm -hmm. 97 is 
the move again uh, yeah you keep suggesting this move but somehow i don't know i mean you know it, why it's i okay. suggest this yeah, move yeah. because h5 is is the move which uh reminds me this kind of positions where you push too much the pawns and then mm -hmm. you didn't check with your opponent and your king is weak by mm -hmm. 97 knight f5 we're keeping still the eye on ah, you don't want square. to castle you want to put the knight on f5 yes exactly mm -hmm. oh, i don't actually necessarily need to castle here though knight f5 is good enough for me to make my king feel safe and then mm -hmm. h5 h4 is still on the board i just with this like one two moves i just get my knight at the king side to make myself feel safer mm -hmm. uh, because i'm still not castled yeah i see maybe and here is like a little trap uh that if white plays c4 then you have this okay you mentioned knight c6 but here knight e5 looks even stronger yeah. right so you did uh uh transfer your knight to the king side where it seems it might be of a bigger help than on uh, the queen side because who knows i mean at any point there might be some ideas connected with the king side attack and it still keeps an eye on this d4 square together with the bishop and it's so hard to protect gosh there's a queen on b2 just yeah it's so so badly placed it has bishop functions here like bishop mm. b2 does why it wishes to have the bishop here instead of the queen <laughs> imagine if we just you know give white all those moves back and we put her queen onto d1 and the bishop on b2 it's gonna be another story at this point. yeah the it's question what's the perfect square for the queen like if you could could that choose one score for this queen what it could be and you answer d1 exactly better well i i would pick h5 to tell you the truth uh, but okay yeah that's my dream h5 yeah. the queen on h5 in this position but it's not a bug house right where you can just have your queen put it on h5 and it's like white pieces are trying to escape the board uh, yeah like you are wrongly placed the pieces and you just want to leave the board like just just leave the board not even play or capture so just just leave the board then exactly it, it has this kind of weird feeling um well uh here's the thing bishop e4 was something that for sure Leighton G actually so uh do you think she is more relieved that she has now this bishop f1 move rather than to have complication because when bishop e4 happens this is the result of two you know already either you win or you lose well you never know i mean there is some initiative and uh this direct attack and the king is in the center uh, i mean you just again bishop takes e4 seems to be quite desperate right you're sacrificing a piece for two pawns and um you understand that it should not really be enough or at least if you don't feel if i mean you can be kind of the player who doesn't like uh, giving up your material and play for the initiative right because you just well, just don't play chess this way. And you see knight e7 coming, and um, uh, you see that black is in time to castle, and then you just don't feel like giving up all this, I mean, a piece. It's a whole piece, and you're playing with a piece down, and uh, probably Tan did calculate it. She evaluated it as a big advantage for black. And again, she might not be... Um, she might not be feeling that her position is so bad after bishop of one again why should it be right what has she done so wrong in this game okay she put her queen to b2 but black moved her knight and uh, pushed her pawn so far and the king is still in the center why should it be bad for white it's still a mystery to me, guys. When I look at this position, yeah. when I see those pawns and these bishops that kind of stuck behind and the king in the center and those white squares, and I imagine, you know, I have a vivid imagination. I imagine white's queen being on h5 as a checkmate. I don't really see why the position for white should be that bad. Yes, I see the eval bar and it's kind of bugging me it's kind of making my perfect life uh incomplete <laughs> yes alexandra to me this position is the is the uh training uh position when the coach setups like 
something like Mark Boretsky would set up uh, and ask some questions and you answer, you think you're right. And then when you learn the truth, you are like, your brain is just exploding. Cause like, oh, wow, there's another thing. It's so, so much nuances here. You guys, I think this is the moment when Lei Tingzhi will take most of her time from the clock because she needs to come up with a precise idea here, precise plan, because her king is still not castled. Either she gives it all and goes, king side attack or she will find a way to castle and play more peaceful game uh so we're gonna take a short break uh, meanwhile uh letting she is thinking but you guys can in fact join the official chess.com discord now over fifty thousand members strong this server has tons of exciting features including weekly arenas with the chances to win a diamond membership and AMS with streamers and masters. Don't miss it out. Connect your chess.com account to your Discord account and gain access to it all. You're having fun out there, so join us at the go.chess.com slash Discord or use command Discord in the chat for more information. And you guys, we're taking now a very short break. We'll be back soon with more exciting moments of this tournament. This is the FIDE Women's Candidates Tournament Final. See you guys shortly. I don't even know if Vicaro knows this story. So at some point we were we were running what was called the chess.com ambassador program. I was convincing to give this little chess website that could a chance because I know ICC is better to play, but give us a chance. When we thought about trying to get someone to play on our site who could who could motivate other title players to come, we were having a lot of internal debates about all the top players at the time. I mean, I've known Icaro since I was 11 and he was nine, right? It was, we were, everyone was good. There was no pros. I'm not gonna list any of the cons, but Eric was the one who was like, hey, like, if we're gonna do this, why not just go right to the top? Like, Icaro's the best online chess player in the world. We had all the other grandmasters, Bruno, but it's like, hey, if we really care about this, why are we spending our time um, you know, trying to trying to do this in five years. Let's just go get Hikaru to play on our site. And and Eric reached out to Hikaru and had a great call. And I've known Hikaru for years, so it wasn't hard for me to connect with him. And and the moment we got Hikaru playing on our site, it was like every top chess player in the world followed.
Welcome back everyone, this is FIDE Women's Candidates Final, Tan Jong Gi, Lei Ting Ji fighting for the seed at the World Championship match against Ju Wen Jun. Lei Ting Ji now on the screen, she is very deep in her thoughts, uh, she is now leading the match with one point ahead, she needs one more victory in the match to celebrate the uh, win a round before, but Tan Jong Gi is there to slow her down. Uh, Alexandra, before we left for the break, we have received a new move, which we have not considered yet from Lei Tingji's side, and that was Queen 2 F6. Shall we take a look? What is this move about? Exactly. Queen F6. So after Bishop F1, that was marked as uh, by the cruel engine as a bad move, as uh, Queen F6. Queen f6 was chosen and was played by Lei, and that's a miss. Mm -hmm. and so that's actually described and did not find the winning move. It's not necessarily means that it's a bad move, it's just not the most precise move after bishop to f1. To, there were to other clarify. ways to continue, and one of them, that the plans that you mentioned that look so good, uh, it's knight e7. Right, trying to transfer your knight to a five or just cover this diagonal and castle. And it mm. was indeed a very, very strong uh, idea. Knight e7, h5 was another well, completely engine like idea that we also discussed. And queen f6, which is marked with a miss sign uh, from the computer, is the idea with the same plan as you mentioned. Uh, Black wants to play knight e7, but first they let her queen 
get to this open file closer to the king side and she's getting ready for 97 and castle right what can be wrong with that it sounds so logical it looks so logical but mm-hmm. tactics tactics is always a problem the only problem in black's position right now right here is the king in the center meaning mm-hmm. time why it really needs to try to get to this king it's all she should be thinking of and focusing on and queen e2 followed and that's a bad that's a bad move yes she feels that her pieces are discoordinating she's trying to (laughs) kind of like i mean change places change pieces and somehow uh re-coordinate that but it was not the way to go she should have kept her queen on b2 but really we hated this queen to be on b2 yes but it's game. time it's about time guys if black <laughs> manages to play 97 if she manages to make all those moves h5 and castle positionally white's position is very bad because because well black stabilize it she mm. has like has a space advantage and good uh, attacking pers- uh, perspectives, right? She she can easily uh, start pushing her pawns even further down, h4, g3, and it's very hard for black to protect against this plan since this pawn on e4 kind of, you know, pr- controls a lot of squares in uh, white's camp already. So it's about time, about the fact that the king is still on e8 and there, there there's still something that can be done and this something it started was supposed to be starting it was 92 and mm-hmm. why it has in fact the saving brilliant idea after 97 which seems to be very logical right rook takes e4 you're not gonna believe it but just suck your rook sacrifice it but just get to this king it's not about Whoa. material it's about time and it's amazing to see that being a rook down, the whole rook down for two points, white has enough compensation. Just oh, this to is keep crazy. Shall going. we see more moves here? How white can proceed after 96? Yes, definitely. Well, first of all, the queen is under attack, right? And black has some trouble uh, finding a, I mean, a good spot for this queen because queen f5 or queen f7 would run into a fork and game over right mm-hmm. so those two squares are out of question same story goes here if you go queen to g6 that of course i can give a check but there is another move to consider which is bishop to d3 first keeping this right. fork in uh, mind and um i am threatening to give a discover check and if you play um if you play knight f5 here i have this 96 always have this 96 and then i mean it's still quite fascinating for myself even to see that white has such a strong attack because well a rook is a rook right you would say a rook is a rook, rook is a very white very shall not i think piece. take exactly they shall not take on siege they shall continue just grabbing the pawns giving checks and in this position white has um three pawns the rook but her position is, is better. That better. is it's completely better. insane for me to see this position. Um, but also somehow a logical one. You have these three minor pieces now around the Black King. Black King walked all the way to the queen side and all white needs is to activate the queen from B2. And that can be the final blow for the king and now we have this position alexander that we were talking so much from white's perspective that white's pieces were coordinated exactly. on the other side of the board and now it's black species being on the king side queen rook bishop knight too far away from all the actions so, exactly yes yeah. that's what i was thinking i mean that you just said what i was going to say that we mentioned i mean so many times white pieces being like stuck on the queen and it's suddenly here it's where they are supposed to be, right? Bishop before, queen a3, queen a5, and, well, that could have been such a turnaround. Uh, but unfortunately for Tan, she didn't stop here. She didn't consider it, probably. And again, I think the main problem for her is that she does not realize how bad her position is if Black stabilizes it, if Black plays 97, 95, if they castle, she just... 
I mean, doesn't see a problem with her current position and doesn't see why she should you know, start considering those crazy sacrifices because usually you start considering these desperate measures only if you're kind of pushed, if you're forced to do it, if you realize that your position is going to be just bad without such measures. Uh, and here it doesn't look yet yeah, this way. Bishop of one, queen e2, uh, that was the move that Tan played. Just calmly, you know, improving your position kind of moves, which usually are okay, but not in that case, h5 was played indeed protecting the pawn on g4 and getting ready for this maneuvers knight e7 castle or knight e7 knight e5 without castling at all and now the queen of the two poor guy it was on b2 we criticized it so much now oh it's on e2 so kind of blocking the rook what's wrong with this queen this is how i feel every time in my right. chess game i don't feel that i need queens if i'm always looking for trade <laughs> the queens <laughs> this is how actually I, it makes me feel alexander i would like to make a little bit oh we have the next move knight to b2 um mm -hmm. what is trying to develop the pieces why it actually yeah. recognized that this was too much uh, no, she didn't recognize it. She just improved her position, you know, queen e2, knight e2. She's just following her plan. She, again, the problem is that she kind of had to play knight d 2 uh, even though the queen is almost stuck on b2, but have this brilliant idea of rook takes e4, sacrificing a rook. And here she feels... She feels that she improved her position. She feels that she brought her queen into the center, you know. And after h5, she feels that Tan is developing her pieces and everything is fine according to her. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. the engine doesn't agree with her at all. It gives a huge advantage to black. Again, it's so hard to believe. It's not clear from the first sight why it should be that bad for white. But your move cat in 97 and what what's next? What can white do? Yeah, at this point, uh, white can still like end this uh, suffering in this position uh, with maybe knight sacrifice because I think this sacrifice is still still on the board. Let's say knight e4, pawn takes e4, and queen to e4. Now yes. you are threatening several things with that. Uh, the pawn, first of all, on b7 is hanging, and if you collect all the pawns on the queen side, why not? You can you can absolutely go with, with that. Bishop c6 now is impossible because you're going to drop the pawn on e6. Uh, and I was actually thinking some ideas like bishop to e7 might be extra pressure here with d5 or maybe bishop c4. So, um, yeah, exactly. Again, oh, this sacrifice. You can, you can look for this kind of... Things. Yeah, we can. And we should. I mean, that's and Alexander, what another, another detail here yeah. might be also consider into consideration that if somehow Black managed to castle, White can play Bishop to d3 to get this. Now the pawn on f2 is hanging. It's not really working. Uh, but let's say not Bishop e7 first, Queen e7, and oh, it's working. Oh, okay, okay. Bishop d3 and no, threatening No, because I think C7. if you take on e7 first, yeah. uh, I um, should and be then able bishop to D3. protect, yes, bishop f6 or something like that. I mean, you have just one idea, right, of queen takes a uh, queen h7 checkmate and it doesn't seem okay, to be enough. Okay, this is actually worse than bishop d3 right away. Exactly. Shall we take a look at yes. that more deeply? Bishop d3, queen takes f2, check. Mm-hmm. King h1. And I mean, knight, take, knight a5. Let's have a look at this one. It seems to be so logical, but let's see what uh, what can be and happen here. How mm. are you going to continue your attack? Something as uh, rook bishop, f8. Yeah, d5. maybe bishop f8. Mm -hmm. And now rook to mm -hmm. that's actually very interesting. Well, probably rook f one, queen, or maybe even queen e two to open up queen the e two bishop, queen to e two. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you should uh, exchange queens here. I mean, do you think this end game is? Uh, it just feels. Uh, so winning end game for black 
I think you should keep this no, it's, fire. No, it's very hard to play for sure. Maybe queen to b7. Now. Yeah, I was thinking about queen to b7, but maybe first, like, play rook f1. But okay, let's take b7. The problem of rook f1 is that when you play mm -hmm. rook f1, black plays queen h4, and mm -hmm. then any other move, you have to be careful because knight g3 is, yeah, yeah, exactly. is the check. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably... Uh, and then probably taking just on f1, right? Um... But okay, queen, so he takes b7, right? Queen takes b7 here. Well, there are some counter chances, right? And I think you're completely right um, that it might be the last chance for white to mm. sacrifice here. But again, I, I just don't think Tam will do that. I just don't think she, like, realizes how bad her position might be otherwise. And yeah, let's ask what mm -hmm. Chad wants. You guys want 94 sacrifice? Of course. <laughs> Make some noises. Of course our chat <laughs> wants to see to see sacrifice. I would love to see sacrifice. I I, no, I, I was so excited either. after Queen F6 when I, you know, checked out this line. 92, 97, and the computer started screaming about Rook takes E4. I was so excited to see this position in the yeah. game. But now it's like it feels less probable. It feels uh, that we're not really heading this way. And after um, 97, okay, what else? Okay, let's see. What else can I do after 97? In case of 97, I'm not sure. I mean, Tan is gonna, uh, Lei is gonna play 97. It's not the only move. I mean, she might, you know, she might just play queen to g6. We haven't discussed this move yet. But who knows? Maybe she, I mean, feels this uh, probability of uh, knight takes e4, and she just would prefer to make a, a wait. Uh, it's not a waiting move, but a consolidate, consolidating move, like putting, taking this pawn under control and preparing h4. Yeah, yeah. Sacrifice it for content. Or queen f5. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We should always think about I think the content. All the chess streamers are playing so exciting chess games. We have seen actually. We have to shout out to our friend Dina Belinkaya, who win in, wins another incredible game against the Grandmaster. I think and then we have Hikaru all the time. Streamers uh, winning the tournament, yes. whatever he plays. They are playing playing for content. They are playing for viewers because they are looking for this crazy excitement. And it's working. That's the it's attitude, right? That's the attitude. Rook takes e4, guys. Should be in your mind. It should be in your mind. You should be thinking about the content. Exactly. Come on. Yeah, that's actually okay. If if not content, if not content, because they are not uh, actually streaming. Um, <laughs> they well, we are, um, we are for them, right? <laughs> yeah, they are now screens. They are now hard. They should, I mean, do their best. But they are doing great. I mean, a time, three decisive games. We have not talked about the time, Alexander, today. Ah, and, really? Uh, yes. Lazing G has once again less time on the clock but not so so much difference not not big gap between them and the move 18 has been played the position is very complicated i'm still staying at my uh statement that i i expect here to see heavy uh time pressure what do you think yeah it's sense? heading this way now we can be pretty sure that we're gonna witness some time trouble 30 less than 35 minutes for the next 22 moves uh for lay it's uh, pretty low already on time considering the position considering how unbalanced and um uh this position is so yeah yeah who knows i mean and again her king is still on e8 meaning that even though the computer might be very happy for lay but as soon as this fireworks start and the king with the king in the center anything can happen so that's why we're always you know considering those sacrifices we're always taking only four with a piece with a rook i mean with a knight with a bishop with a rook we're trying desperately trying to open up the position to get to this king that is in the center that it, it's very unusual uh play it's uh it's quite an open position it's not like the Karakan or French defense style. It seems to be 
it seems to have the potential to be open, right? To open up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's yeah. why it's so unnatural to see the king stays in the center for so long. But yeah, that's true. I've seen it in the chat somewhere. And there, there is some kind of um, theory uh, in chess, in the modern chess, that, you know, castling, in fact, is a waste of time. And <laughs> here, Black follows this theory. She, Lay didn't waste time castling. But again, it can backfire. You should always keep in oh, mind. Oh, guys, don't do it. Don't do it in your games. Castle. <laughs> right. Castle for sure, because it's going to be so tricky Ooh. to keep the king in the center. And Ooh. Bishop F8 has Look. been played. Okay. So she's not going to castle at all. She just stayed okay. there. I mean, if uh, if uh, white takes with a uh, with, uh, bishop, she's probably going to take back with her rook, right? Yeah, and to keep the to keep the pressure on F two, maybe King F seven, King G eight, or maybe maybe not. This modern maybe approach. not. Maybe it's still yeah <laughs> on E eight. Let it be there. Okay, let it stay uh, there. Yes, it's for trained professionals only, guys. Don't don't don't. Uh, I mean, do it. Uh, don't try to repeat it in your own games because if you leave the king in the center and you lose in fifteen min mi moves, it's not our fault. We've warned you. It's a very risky approach. <laughs> yeah, can't can't agree more. Uh, Bishop say faith. Uh, trying to trade the uh, dark square bishop actually alexandra i was i was thinking about queen f6 move mm -hmm. uh that it is so natural move to me to see mm -hmm. uh even though there were better moves there uh so basically probably she was planning to play bishop to f8 exactly Mm -hmm. and to keep the eye on f2 shall we just go back yes. uh, in um two moves when she played queen to f8 that's exactly now, yeah what i was if thinking not queen e2 if not queen e2 white's natural move here is to develop the knight mm -hmm. knight to d2 and now at this point either you play bishop f8 or you play knight to e7 the idea is to castle next move, attack on f2, and look at this poor knight from d2, cannot go anywhere, can't even go on f1 because it's occupied, and has to go back on b1. That was Leighton's idea here. For instance, bishop f8, let's just roughly go with bishop f8, rook f8. Now f2 is struggling, and you need to go back, knight to b1. It's so hard to make such a decisions. Yeah, exactly. But that's uh, why white is not going to take on f8, right? And I think, uh, yeah, they need to do something about this knight. So probably bishop b5. And then, you know, kind of trying, trying again to coordinate those pieces to bring the knight to e3 or just to keep it on f1, probably to exchange it, even though exchanging a bishop for a knight uh, sometimes might be not a good idea. But here... And yeah, the position is kind of very strange. And this knight is putting pressure on c4. And bishop takes a six. Feels like um, letting a white uh, play c4. So, I mean, maybe bishop b5 was the move to expect. But you are completely right. Yes, I'm mentioning that after 92, yeah, 97 uh, is met with uh, this brilliant rook takes e4 sacrifice. But it might be the case queen f6 might have been connected with bishop to f8 because it seems so logical indeed right and um, uh, in this line that you mentioned we see the idea of this plan of putting the queen on f6 of bringing the rook to f8 of trying to bring it to f8 and of putting some pressure on this f2 square so probably that's what we were going to see if uh tan uh was to play knight to d2 and now the position is slightly different queen e2 was played instead but that gave just black uh some more time to protect uh the pawn on g4 mm -hmm. and after knight d2 uh bishop f8 seems as a slightly different approach that than what we were focusing on. Oh, no, Bishop B2, Ooh, I Bishop don't B2. like it at all. I Alexandra, don't. I was actually waiting uh, uh, waiting my turn to, to suggest here the move, and I was <laughs> sure that uh, Tanjongi would take the Bishop here, because Bishop B2, first of all, it's just passive move. Now it's Bishop's turn to get on B2 square. We understand that. But it allows Black to regroup the pieces, maybe... Bishop d6 would exactly. be better. Better exactly. bishop. Because yeah. Amin h2, 
you never know what kind of ugly sacrifices can happen here. H4 would be even stronger after that. And you can't allow that to happen. Yeah, exactly. And I'm very surprised to see bishop b2 because, well, putting your bishop back to b2 and the bishop is just, what, looking at all those beautiful pawns on c3 and d4, it looks a little bit sad. For... Bishop on d6, you don't need to ask second time to lay king g. Of course, and that's that's move. an exemplary line that uh, may happen. I'm trying to checkmate. Uh and I don't really need mm -hmm. to give a checkmate, right? Because this knight on d2, suddenly, okay, we developed the knight and now it's under attack. Something doesn't doesn't work very well for a white here. And, well, guys, we, we talked about time trouble. Uh, we might not see one. We might not see one because the position now is getting very, very unpleasant. A few more moves and just the attack can be too strong to hold against. That's right, actually. How how white can... What can be white's next move? Let's put it in a way, like, which piece you can move? I you cannot know. move knight and the bishop at this point. Queen is also quite limited. Maybe rook to c1, but again, what's the plan? And uh, very often... Uh, actually, this is this is this is something that I would like to ask you, Alexander, if you agree. It's better to have bad plan no, that then not to have plan at all would you agree with that yeah that's a kind of a, um suggestion that we have for players who like seem just to move around their pieces and we keep saying this yeah well in a way you know we we can say that yeah in a way this saying can be true um because right now you know, White seemed just to move her pieces around too, too much and it was not clear where her pieces were heading to, while Black definitely followed her plan, right? Yes, she it was a risky one. Uh, she uh, like, kept the king in the center, but look at her determination, right? And look how um, every single move uh, kind of connected with the previous one. And that's that's very important like to have a certain idea to have a certain plan maybe it's not the best plan but at least if one move connects uh with each other is a somehow following a certain path that might be enough just enough to get a good position and it might be better yes than just moving your pieces around with no clue uh on what should be done yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Alexander, there is a possibility of a really cool breakthrough on the king's side. Let's demonstrate mm -hmm. that on the board. Like, for instance, if white passes here the move and makes like rook to c1, mm -hmm. uh, just, just a move. Now, you would like probably to push h4 and open up the king's side, but the g pawn is hanging. So here is a cool move. You go g3 mm -hmm. right away. You sacrifice the pawn. And here's the moment. No matter what's white takes here f takes or h takes <laughs> then you go h4 and you completely just break down the whole king side okay let's see till then because that's exactly what's happening that's exactly what's happening okay not rook a to c1 but rook a to d1 is played oh i see another question mark yes rook to d. this is third one which gives uh black some advantage this is the move which makes worse position well, I mean, how worse is it making the position? Maybe it's already so bad that any move would get this uh, yellow mark, right? Maybe mm -hmm. how how was it actually possible to defend from this G3 idea? You could play G3, but it's so hard to play here. G3. Well, you are even, not strong on this king. Yeah, side. it looks even worse to tell you the truth. And yeah, let's let's dive into all those lines and let's discuss what actually is gonna happen after g3 because again it doesn't seem to be so obvious uh, but the problem is it seems that i can play it simply queen f4 right in this line mm -hmm. and uh well there is no way to protect this uh pawn look at the pawn on e4 and how important Brilliant it is pawn. it restricts the knight of getting to f3 and oh just too bad too bad and 
place heading to win the game and the match it's been a very powerful game so far yes queen f6 was marked as a miss but now we know that lace plan was not really connected with 97 the plan that gets suggested that we talked about a lot that, that we uh like but it was connected with another plan of trying to exchange this dark squared bishop of trying to get rid of them to get the control over the f8 square and uh, in that case it might be well, oh, that, what, awesome. happened? what happened no, no she castle no oh. we don't say g4 look you at jinx you guys time. you were screaming about castling for so long that she could not resist and she castled why did she do that she could have finished the game with this brilliant mm. g3 idea and the rook is exactly where she's supposed to be on the h file and you know as bobby fisher suggested okay it was for the dragon variation but he suggested that it's like you open up the h file and then check check and check, 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 and, check and that's it for h5 trade trade check and check me that, that's exactly the, that's that's the poem that we should remember alexandra we don't have this g3 but i would like to show our viewers mm -hmm. one very cool line after g3 pawn takes g3 h4 and upon, uh, f takes g3 sorry mm -hmm. i have to be precise h4 and here if white tries to trade the queen's queen to f2 this position is so good for black you can actually trade the queens and go to the in, in the end game where you have h takes g h takes g now castle and king e2 or king g1 bishop g3 this is a big advantage for black yes castle and i was thinking about playing rook h1 you know trying trying to fancy. stop this king from going back but yeah castle oh that's that's nice that's a nice feeling to castle on the 24th move and With a check mm -hmm, it would look so <laughs> much better but okay maybe the castle that black preferred in this game is still okay it just looks a little bit uh, unlogical here why didn't she consider just relay come on why didn't you finish this game now yeah, G3 is uh, a very uh, interesting idea of breakthrough. It's not the move that you naturally think of. You think of H4 and then G3, uh, unless you you see this. Like, to be honest, I would not consider here G3. I just, I have seen these ideas earlier, but you know, sometimes you see these ideas, but it's somewhere in your brain, just well, <laughs> dust here. So you well, don't really remember those things. No, um, no, 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 no. With the moves G4 and H5, as your rook being on H8, you do consider them. How can you not? How can you not? You consider that with H4, but then you're dropping the pawn on G4. So that could be the process. If, if Lei actually, consider this as a candidate move i'm sure she would spend at least some more time to go through exactly it because it's so difficult to find the uh the uh answer back from from white like how would you how would you deal with h4 next move probably one more line. i don't believe one she more found line to answer. follow because i'm trying you know i'm trying to understand what um Wait, could have stopped be a queen blunder right yes H3 yes that's the lines that i want to show bishop yeah H2. bishop h2 so there are some ah it's so sad i mean and she played uh, uh this castle relatively fast and okay i mean her position is still very very good but just g3 was a game over immediately because g3 of course is followed by h4 right and it's mm. uh, hard to ignore I mean, maybe she was afraid of something like that. I'm starting to think maybe. Yes, that ca can be the answer. Yes, because here it feels like, you know, the attack is stopped. The king is in the center. And if you play bishop g3, finally, I mean, uh, you might be in trouble. Yes, I think that's that's why. Now I understand. She didn't like this option. She didn't yeah, like probably. F3. That was the uh, reason why she didn't went went for it. Although yeah, she didn't go. Yeah, exactly. although it uh, it feels like still here should be move like queen h four maybe. Well, queen h four three, queen h four three, and um. Well, I see the line that the computer suggests. Tell us it's definitely 
I just don't understand it yet. Wait, I need to check it out. I still, ah, now I see. Okay. Let's but, okay, go. The line is the move is E3. Oh. And the idea, yes, it's very far from obvious. After queen takes three, to play bishop f4, to push this queen away, and then have time after g takes h4, uh... finally to bring this knight to oh, g3. Wow, this but is that's so too cool. strong. I mean, that's amazing. And what is more surprising, that this white so pieces cool. stand so badly, so poorly placed, that there is no way they can protect neither from uh, this knight getting to f5, nor from it getting to g3. Even though it's quite a long journey, right? One, mm. two, three, but... Wow, this is so cool. Alexandra, these kind of games and the positions and the ideas make me feel like, oh my God, I want to play chess. Chess is so cool. And I'm going at the competition. I play chess for nine <laughs> rounds. First five goes really cool. I'm, I'm in a good shape. And the last four goes so bad for me that I'm coming yeah. back at the commentary chair and doing my job. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Like when you see these ideas, you think like, oh my God, this is so cool and you can totally work it out because you just see it. <laughs> Here in this game, uh, we have seen so many cool ideas, starting with the rook sacrifice, rook e4, and other sacrifices too in the center. That was like so amazing. And then g3, then this one, it gives so much knowledge in one game, right? And then you somehow feel like you have a big heart and you want to... <laughs> Play yourself the chess game. Well, out. that's exactly why we're commentating this game. I'm very happy that you are getting this uh, desire to play. I do hope that our spectators get the same feeling. You that guys they do are ready. want to play yeah. chess now after watching all these cool ideas. Everyone is and... actually capable to find. Why not? You just need to. You just need to train, and do be focused. So. Well, sometimes you can just go and do your best and then analyze your game. Just don't focus on the result, right? If mm -hmm. you're playing to learn something new and there are so many opportunities to try a new opening to, like, I don't know, to... Um, you can find the motivation not only in the result, not only in rating points, but in some other stuff. And uh, here, probably we are starting to realize why Lei decided to, you know, to just to play it calmly to castle. She likes her position a lot. She knows that the queen would go to g6 eventually, the knight would get to f5, and then she will play h4 and g3. No reason to, you know, jump into uh, this... Um, desire to finish the game as soon as possible because that's where losers i mean come it's mm -hmm. i compare now it all the time to tennis because my daughter plays uh tennis and i follow her competitions and i know how tempting it is you know to finish the game if you have a winner you want to hit it smash it you know immediately but sometimes the best option is just to keep calm and mm -hmm. to continue the game, if you have a better position, just, you know, to improve it a little bit, to like play side to side and don't uh, risk it. Don't risk it to play this uh, tempting winner because you can spoil it all. It can get to the net and that's it. The point is going to be lost. Yeah, that's absolutely. That's uh, that's very correct approach to uh, have the control of all the, all the board and not to allow your opponent to have any chance and to dominate but that's also the skill that you need to have it's just not coming by the way because you guys the moment you have good position you have a thousand more unnecessary thoughts in your head and other things coming in your head besides the chess pieces so it's the moment to uh, be more focused for now alexandra we have 31 minutes for both players time is also quite balanced and we need to have 20 more moves before the time increment and after that the player is going to get 40 uh 30 minutes more for rest of the game right right and well i mean i keep wondering what can i do right to get this uh this whole setup, this whole position, because it feels like, I don't know, like playing C4 and, uh, but let's have a look, you know what C4 is running into? Because yep. it feels like making this move. And it's not about knight takes D4, because I am even not sure that knight takes D4 is working here. I mean, yeah, it's actually losing. It's a trap. 
because then too many pieces on the D file and 94 is going to follow and white is going to be more than okay. But da -da -da -da, um, after C4, after C4, guys, what is okay, it? Okay, <laughs> you, you still have time, you know, you still have time to show your brilliancy chat. You still have I'm I'm making the theatric or you know this pose you are supposed to make after C4 there's gonna be bishop takes h2. Huh, and after interesting. King h2 there's gonna be queen h4. And then it's so easy to find these lines when Rook you look F2. at the engine. I mean it's so brilliant. But okay, it's very hard, of course, in a practical game. But look at that. Just a queen and a pawn. And just because of the fact that all white pieces are kind of so discoordinated, there is no way to protect from this. Alexandra, this game is a study case. Yes. You can you can you can get so many so many ideas here. Tactical motives, positional motives. It's just uh, it's just brilliant. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just enjoy it. No, because uh, C four, I think, is the move that we might. C. I mean, the only problem, you don't have to be that brilliant. You don't have to look for it because after C4, you can simply play knight to B4. Hmm. Also, to Alexandra, is this actually a threat? Like maybe castle was, a, was a, you know, getting ready for bishop C2. If white makes any other move, like let's say mm -hmm. on, the, on the queen side. B4. <laughs> A4, whatever, just any, yes. any other pass move. Maybe still bishop h2 is a trap here that Lei Tingzhi has prepared and her idea was not just to castle to keep her king safe, but yeah. she is cooking up this sacrifice. Yeah, this is brilliant attack indeed. So now we figured out what a threat is, right? So bishop takes h2, queen h4, rook f2, g3, simple, right? Sounds simple when you see it. So maybe the only way to protect from is to play g3. But, you know, you don't really want to make this move because you you know that after g3, h4 is going to be coming um, at some point. Or, okay, black yeah, will yeah, still might need to protect this pawn. But who knows, maybe just the only move to keep the game going. I would, uh, I would love to get after g3 if that's the only move white has to play. Something like knight d8, knight f7, knight g5. To ah, and that's exactly what have been played. G3 is now mm -hmm. on the board. Ten Zhongi sensed that something was wrong uh, on the king side. And now she has to weaken the F3 square, H3 square, light, light squares on the king side. Um, this is the one road for the knight, but it takes like four moves, three moves to get in there. Perhaps there is something, something better on the... Um, on the board and i'm starting to think maybe it's time to activate the light square bishop alexandra on d7 it's so passive some move like a6 knight move bishop b5 kind of things and i'm just getting to the point that c4 might be considered there the uh one of the main line yes but okay of course you want to see this uh bishop uh, um in the game right even more but well still i mean if you try to open up the position it can backfire right because the center right now is pretty safe i mean you kind of protect it uh black protected uh <clears throat> her center and if you play five it can just um be ruined in a few moves and uh, instead well, knight d8, of course, is a great plan, but I'm not sure how fundable it is in the practical game. It like seems to be so long, you know, very beautiful. I like it very much, but I think like a more practical way to um, play. I, I had this crazy yeah. idea. I don't think it's working, but the idea was to distract the queen from a2. The pawn on f2 is hanging, right? Uh, but it's not working, unfortunately, to take knight d4, pawn takes d4 and bishop b5. Because wow. um, first of all, queen still has the square on e3, and that can be played. Uh, mm -hmm. And if and I take second, like after taking on f2, you don't really have pieces on the board left. Well, you to... can continue giving them up, but 
<laughs> I'm afraid it won't be enough. Yeah, although it's a very nice idea. Yeah, indeed. But here probably even rookie too. Um, yes, uh, again, there might be some ideas like this in this position with this pressure on the king side. And of course, you should consider them and you should uh, watch out and try to find such ideas. But maybe this plan of preparing h4, right, of playing queen g6, followed by h4, and then, but again, it's a pity that this rook has left the h file because I feel like, you know, putting it back to it. I feel like playing rook f7, rook h7, queen h5. Mm. Um, I was actually considering king f8, uh, <laughs> king mm -hmm. f7, sorry, and rook lifts on the h file to get back in the, in the position we have. Oh, wow. But the what? good news is that the game keeps going. Yeah. Because if, well, the good news for spectators, of course, because uh, if uh, Lei would play G3, I mean, there were big chances that the game would be over pretty soon. Although this E3 move, how findable it is, I'm not sure. I mean, E3 was too brilliant, really too hard to spot. And uh, that's quite reasonable why uh, Black decided to just to castle. And now another plan, a very positional and nice plan that I like. Uh, okay, we, we, we keep in mind this brilliancy, right? But also rook f7, followed by rook c to f8, you know, tripling the pieces for the moment on the f file, putting some pressure. And um, c white play, I don't know, bishop g2, rook f1, uh, trying to protect. And, and she plays knight d8. Guys, knight d8 is on the board. Wow. <laughs> All I My can girl, say is yes. Wow. <laughs> We're playing a team. That's actually a clear plan that she wants to play knight f7, knight g5 to get this knight on the king side. She is now uh, feeling that these squares are very weak and knight on c6 is not doing that much of the job. Uh, things are heating up. And here, on the other hand, Tan Zhongyi has to find a plan. Um, so far, what she has done is avoiding the white blacks challenges here and guarding the pieces. So far, she is doing really great. She is still standing uh, and the game is on, which is so cool for us. You guys, will we see the challenger today? Can Leiting Ji convert this advantage and win the game and win the match a round before? That's the question we can answer right we're back from the break. For, the, for now, guys, you will, uh, we will take some break, but players are not taking any breaks. And by the time we're back, we're going to have some more moves and, of course, time pressure on the clock. So you don't want to miss the rest of the action. Oh my god! What? Oh, beautiful! He's got this in the bag. We have a winner, Magnus Carlsen. Limlay makes it through. Oh! Oh! It's a draw so close for Hikaru Nakamura. I do like positional styled games. I may try to keep it positional, but I, 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 I can also uh, change gears. And I think that's very important in terms of, uh, you know, anyone trying to develop their chess game. Um, if you do find, you know, style of play that you enjoy, that's good, but you could also try to sharpen it by implementing, you know, an, another form of uh, in, into your bag, as we would call it, right? Hey everybody, it's Danny here, and as you may know, Chess.com and Chessable are now one, and I'm here to show you how you can make your Chess.com and Chessable one in just a few clicks. To start, let's log in and connect our Chess.com account. I just scroll right here above the browser and click Login. Scroll down and click 
continue with chess.com. Now, if you're already logged into chess.com, it's just going to ask you if you want to approve that connection. I'm going to say yes, sir. But after approving, it'll bring you right back to the Chessable homepage. Now, the Puzzle Connect feature can be found under Tools and you click Puzzle Connect. Now, what that does after you type in your username is it's going to pull positions from the games you've played on chess.com, create your very own personalized chessable course, and then quiz you with the positions where you may have missed the best move. And the more you play on chess.com, the more games it will have to quiz you as long as your account stays connected. It's pretty sweet, and it's going to help you get better learning from the mistakes in your games. Yes, this is a pro feature at Chessable, but if you go to chessable.com slash link, you can get 30 days of pro for free. Welcome back, everyone. This is Fide Women's Candidates 2023. And the question we dropped before we went to the break was that, can we see the challenger of the World Championship match Ju against Juve in June? Can Leighton G convert her big advantage into a full point and win? Or Tanjong Gi can save the game, make a draw, or even break the victory in this game we never know the time is ticking on the clock for both players and time is one of the key factors sometimes when they have seconds on the clock night to d8 has been made by lating g we took a break we're back and seems like tanjong has thought for more than seven minutes for this move for all Alexandra. our break right <laughs> Right. She is, yes. I think, struggling to find the move here. She has to stop this knight coming on g5. No, she can't actually to stop, but she needs to somehow make the magic. Uh, our usual sacrifices, 94, no longer works now, right? 
Well, I mean, you can still give up a piece, right? But your uh, pawn on f2 is hanging, so meaning that you can't really uh, take back um, with the queen after knight takes e4, f, d takes e4. Uh, and you know why this position is so sad to see and why uh, is Stan falling below on time? Because there is no counterplay to think of. I mean, the only counterplay you can think of, okay, except knight takes e4, that doesn't seem to be um, enough or possible here. Because there were some other moments where she didn't play this move when it was screaming for. Um, the another idea is just c4, but c4 doesn't really attack anything, right? Okay, it puts some pressure on d5, but if white takes on d5, he takes d5, then this open file can just backfire. This rook can get to c2, and can it can even be worse than what we're having right now. Although, what can be worse than that? I mean, a very sad yeah. position. Uh, actually, Alexandra, I'm uh, thinking uh, to suggest move h4 here. H3? H3 maybe. Yeah, I was thinking to that... suggest. Okay, both mm -hmm. are possibilities. H four because knight mm -hmm. on g five will mm -hmm. not get there if you don't capture, and if you capture, then you kind of have the king very open there, and h five is hanging. Um, yeah, this since... is something. But of course, h three is is even more tense move here because you are actually uh, attacking g four pawn, and black has to make decisions. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I see your plan. I know what you mean. You want to stop somehow. Um, I mean, you want to take control over this g5 square, right? But now I wonder what's going to happen if I bring my knight to f5 or back to c6, e7, e5, right? And uh, are you going to be able to hold those two pawns? Because if my knight gets to f5, and e3 is to be considered, bishop takes g3 is to be considered, knight takes h4 is to be considered. Too many moves to be considered. So it doesn't feel, I mean, it doesn't feel enough to hold the position. I uh, cannot that's... agree more, but uh, there is a plan for that. Mm -hmm. We can actually consider after yep. h4, knight to uh, f7, I guess. Knight f7, knight h6. Ah, uh, knight, okay, okay you're well, going this know. way. Okay, mm -hmm. it makes actually more sense. But anyway, mm -hmm. bishop g2. Mm -hmm. uh and the uh the moment here uh the knight gets on h6 we might consider we consider to sacrifice on e4 right. and mm -hmm. open up the position yes i mean i see the valve bar liking this position for white a lot even though i mean if we just count the material it seems uh that it shall not be enough but i see it like indicating even some mm -hmm. advantage for white, yeah, probably uh, it's connected with uh... c4, no, and opening okay. up Ooh. this diagonal. I don't know. Or I was D5. suggesting a uh, queen e3, queen g5, knight e6, mm -hmm. bishop c1 ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, queen e3 again, it's not so clear to me whether you really want to sacrifice uh, to exchange the queens. No, no, no. Because... I think we should start with knight e6, queen d6, and then queen queen e3. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. no, and attacking the knight and heading to g5, right? And if you manage to win those pawns, then yeah, why not? I might, plan, might, uh, I might change my plan to mm -hmm. <laughs> win the game. And if uh, king goes on h7 uh, to guard the knight, then we have this bishop c1, which can a little bit annoy the knight uh, on h6. Yeah. Knight okay. f5, queen g5. Exactly. Well, still this white diagonal kind of um, screams that it should not be enough for white. For example, even if I play rook f6, and if you play queen g5, I play rook f8. And then, I mean, even though it gives a pretty decent uh, evaluation to white, I think queen hard h5 to be... here makes a mm -hmm. lot of sense because you can take f2 pawn because knight on h6 is hanging. Yeah, but it's still so hard to believe that it's going to be enough. But nevertheless, this position looks so much better than the current position, right? And um, definitely, maybe something like that should be done. Well, at least my intention, if I were white, would be to, you know, to try to undermine somewhere to play C4 or H3. Uh, the problem, 
well, can be and usually it's uh, what happened? Uh, Bishop, Bishop G2. G2. Actually, there was mm-hmm. there was the move that I was thinking so much mm-hmm. that why we need H4? Why don't we go Bishop to G2 here and after Knight F6, F7, which has been played right away by Lei Qing Zhi, um, maybe we can sacrifice now. But now, okay, it's a different story because those pawns, they are not like... Um, um stopped by your pawns right anymore then the, the g5 square is not under control as well so uh, do you want to sacrifice with a knight or with a bishop oh that's a tough question <laughs> because with a knight i just don't think you have enough time you see this knight is coming to g5 it's getting somewhere to h3 f3 just too bad it looks too bad because for example if you Try to guard the squares and bishop six is coming up. I mean, just too hard to believe it uh, will be holdable. So the only option that is left is to sacrifice with the bishop then, right? Then, okay, you're giving up your light squared bishop. Uh, well, here is some kind of a fork, even though this bishop is protected by this knight. Still, it doesn't feel to be enough. Even queen of three here, no? No, it says no. I'm losing after queen f3. What's wrong? Ah, I'm sorry, guys. I blundered. There is queen f3, knight f6, knight d7. Sorry. I got to be careful about not blundering uh, pieces in one move. Then, okay, yeah, let's, so, I don't know, play queen g6. And uh, there is no way to get to my king and to these pawns anymore, right? Because in the lines that you suggested previously, uh, somehow, after knight h6, my knight was uh, getting under attack and those pawns were hanging all the time and the bishop was not protected. So maybe, I mean, maybe, yeah, and the problem is that now the knight is heading to g5. And if you play h4 here, it's, it looks like you lost some time, right? Because I'm going to take and play knight g5 and you don't have time to stabilize the position. So it seems that, yeah, once again, in this game, Tan somehow plays too slowly. I mean, she doesn't feel the momentum. She doesn't feel the moment where she can actually try to uh, complicate. Yeah, there is, a, there is a funny comment in the chat on Twitch. Never seen a sad as Fiancata bishop. Probably BT Bishop, but you have seen Fianchetto Queen just in this game, Queen on B2, and it was more sad, more sad than this Bishop on B2. At least this Bishop holds the Queen side together and the center together. Uh, because in some of the lines when Queen was on B2, it was so many uh, attempts to sacrifice the piece in the center and uh, just break it down. And now Bishop on B2 uh, is kind of holding it uh, up. Oh, that's very interesting, actually. Bishop g2 was not the only move. h4, h3 was another very uh, nice approach there. Um, but Tanjongi did not really, really consider to stop this knight uh, coming on g5. What else What else she might plan here? She can't really avoid the uh, knight to stop knight g5. Maybe c4 here, Alexandra. Well, maybe, but again, somehow, somehow it's a little bit, it seems to be a little bit slow, right? Because she lets uh, Black's Knight get to G5 and C4, well, is the move to make. It's a move definitely to consider because you want to somehow open up this position. It feels so suffocating in a way to play with white uh, uh, right now. So you want some space, you want to open up. But the problem is that after c4, I mean, you don't want to take on d5 because of this c file opening up uh, and additional ideas connected with bishop b5 that you already discussed, uh, like uh, start to be happening. And it just, and look at the time, 12 minutes left and the position is just, it's very hard to believe that. It's not it, very promising. Um, another suggestion what we can have here for Tan. She she, she needs our suggestions. She has 12 <laughs> minutes on the clock and very bad position. Uh, how about we sacrifice a knight on e4 now? Knight e4, t- uh, pawn takes on e4 and push c4 to open up the dark square bishop on this diagonal. And as chat says, the sad bishop to make it very happy. Or at least a little happy after that. I mean, I'm in for all all ideas uh, that kind of make it this, this, any of this bishop uh, a little bit happier. 
But yes, we see that Tan is not in mood for sacrificing, or at least she doesn't feel it the right moment. And I'm just afraid she can, you know, get um, to the point where it's just too late. It's just too late. Okay, let's see how to break through. One thing is to get a winning position. Another thing is to win, to actually win the game. It's uh, uh, with um, it's it just it requires some calculation, some precision, and um, finding this right moment to break through. Because what Y did seems to be pretty logical, right? They put the knight onto e three. They, uh -huh, knight of three immediately so fast. Oh, I'm impressed by this decision. Bishop takes right away because this seems to is, be. Are moved. we gonna see? Yes, G takes f3. Okay. And perhaps queen to f1. Yeah, Can maybe. But I'm just queens? afraid that it's so bad. The position is so bad. Uh, yeah. It just, I mean, it's just question of uh, black improving it, and then you know, sacrificing something on g3. Yeah. It just looks very bad. <laughs> it looks very, very bad. And well, unfortunately, at certain moments, the commentators and spectators, I mean, hard to suggest anything. Uh, you just need to watch uh, the game unfold because well, just nothing to say, really. No, no more suggestions left. We desperately tried, right, to uh, <laughs> suggest any, yeah, yeah, sacrifices, like uh, trying to open up all those uh, attempts to open up the position. But now it seems to me that we just need to watch how Lei kind of gets this full point again. Exactly. Beautiful yes. pawn chain, d5, e4, f3, mm -hmm. which totally just one more locked here. down. Uh, maybe bishop c6 to make it beautiful. <laughs> yes. Totally locks down the uh, center and the king side. h4 would be the serious threat now to take on g3, bishop g3 later, and then f2 is on the board. Uh, white bishop on b2 cannot help much. Knight on e3 stops some of the actions, but not really helping. And like white cannot make any further moves if black just pushes h4 now. And Alexander Black also has some time to play king f7, rook h8, double the rooks on h file in that, in, in that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, of course. They do have all the time in the world, or at least it feels this way. Yeah, uh, letting she just took her code off. <laughs> she is very likely calculating <laughs> uh, until the uh physician when she sees checkmates or she sees the decisive advantage and very likely h4 is her first choice the next yeah step, well after i would consider h4, king f7 after h4 we should take into consideration queen h3 mm -hmm. and that i think the move that's gonna happen if black is to play h4 and then uh well the problem for mm -hmm. white it seems that hmm even knight g4 and knight g6, it just doesn't lead to anywhere, right? Yeah, and h4 is played, h4 is on h4 the board. h4 is on the board, late yeah, she so just that's... made this move. Um, also, it makes it look easier, right? It makes it look easy. I mean, as soon as she found this plan with knight d8, she didn't spend another <laughs> minute for... Um, Moves that followed, knight f7, knight g5, knight f3, almost instantly. G takes f3, h4, she just knows it's it's winning. Uh, we have a question, does g4 save white here? What happens if g4 mm -hmm. happens? Yeah, let's have a look. What happens if white is to play g4? Well, just too hard to believe that with this pawn, it's going to be holdable. Again, plans such as rook f7, rook g7, <coughs> I'm sorry, might be in the action. Mm -hmm. Because if at some point white plays h3, then queen f4 and queen h2, it's impossible to protect uh, this um, yeah. um, square anymore. So 
only queen h3, right? Oops. Oh, how about king g7 or rook f7, rook h7, h3, and queen h queen f4, and checkmate like that. So wow. brutal. Wow, but okay, <laughs> king h1, queen g1, queen g3 is my uh, last attempt oh, to protect yeah. the position. I know it looks very sad, but what else to do, right? What else um, to suggest? Of course, you can play queen f4, but then queen h3. And, and now we need another knight to get mm -hmm. it back to on g5, the board, to right. put on mm -hmm. g5. But, okay, h4, g4, probably the uh, only way well, How about we push it. h3 first? Because h3. any mm. open h file is, is makes our rooks happy. Queen h3, nice. king g7, rook h8. King g7? King, king g7, yeah. Well, maybe rook f7 as well, maybe. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe it's safer. No, because king g7, I was like thinking about g5, but okay, again, even if you exchange queens with this pawn structure, it's not going to help you. Even if you, black takes and then queen g4 happens, you're just going to take back rook h8. I mean, just hard to believe that mm -hmm. would be possible to hold. Mm. Yeah, King, rook, f, rook f7, I agree with that. It's probably the safest. Yeah, because here after g5, you can even play rook g7. Yeah, and this is not all that the position is so tense and so uh, so bad for white, but also white now is struggling on time. Less than 10 minutes on the clock, 14 more moves to go. This is our time control for the tournament. 19 minutes for 40 moves, and after 40 moves, the player is going to get 30 minutes increment. But for now, Tan is struggling to reach even move 40. Uh, and then the players also have 30 seconds bonus time for each of these moves. Alexandra, we might just see the last game of the match today because Lei Tingji just played so brilliant game starting from the beginning. She's just going all in and getting it all. Well, a very powerful performance by Lei Tingji today indeed. And this kind of games that Tan is having, you know, I've had many, many games like this throughout my career where nothing seems to be working your way. I mean, even though she's playing wide, I mean, the opening somehow went in favor of Lei. She opted for a very interesting and fresh uh, plan, uh, was leaving her king in the center and was pushing her um, king side pawns all the way in. And we see that she's succeeded in her uh in getting her pawns as close to the opponent king as possible i mean one pawn is on f3 the other one is on h4 the pawn on f3 is supported by the pawn on e4 what the pawn structure right um a dream come true for black indeed in this game and well we might witnessing the finish of this match the last game of this match with Lei needing only five games to get this three and a half points, amazing. Of course, it would be amazing for her. Uh, she's very determined. She's very focused, and I'm sure she's very looking in uh, to this uh, match against Juvin Jun. But it's not. We're not yet there, right? We're not yet. Not yet. There. We have to see the end of the game handshake and. Stuff of the clock, and as Alexandra would say, also signing the score sheets. Exactly. We don't exactly. <laughs> we don't accept the other way. G4 has been played. Tan Zhongi is trying to to survive here in this position. Maybe hoping to get queen to H3. Uh, next move to hold the king side together. This queen, poor queen, first was struggling on B2. <laughs> God knows why this queen was on B2, and then. <laughs> Queen F1, Queen H3. Uh, yeah, you can you can totally feel the sadness of this queen struggling on the board. And meanwhile, all Black's pieces were so happy. Even the bishop on e on d7 had some role in this game. And this is a, such a good demonstration of how player can bring all the pieces into the into the game and make it work together. Right. So. The moment of truth. Are we gonna see the brilliant move suggested by Katie? H3. H3 you suggest. 
Well, okay. I mean, it seems to be the best move. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> Chess.com, it should be a brilliant move. Yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting for this double exclamation mark sign. And or we're going to see like a more positional approach that I, you know, lazy one would pick uh, bringing the rook by f7 to g7 not forcing yet anything not calculating mm -hmm. a single line um different moves different approaches h3 rook f7 queen g5 um everything seems to be possible what mm -hmm. would be the late choice that is that is true and also guys hurry up we have predictions going on right now will we see a brilliant move in this game Ah, share your opinion. That's what we're talking about h3. If you see that h3 is coming here, this is the move which stops queen to get on h3. Um, it is very possible that she sees. So make sure that you predict next next move. And our yeah. chat is very positive to that, actually. Yeah, and more important that, yes, indeed, it sacrifices a pawn. But sometimes uh, opening up files is so much more important than the material and actually we witnessed it several times throughout this game that sometimes you know material is not that important as time as getting to the king as opening up all those files so yes this balance between material being actually the main factor in the chess game and um between material being something that you have to sacrifice it's a very difficult challenge right we know i mean in chess and if you're even a pawn down sometimes your position is completely hopeless but on, on the other hand there are certain positions where you need to sacrifice a rook just even for a pawn but in order to be able to win this time to get this initiative and uh, to be able to play uh, a good game Oh, indeed, indeed. After the game, I'm sure Tan Shongi will find out that there was a possibility to look for more active play. Alexandra, there is a comment in the chat that I cannot, I cannot skip that. I have to read it out. So there is, uh, I will not read all, all, all of this, of course, but just some part of it. I don't understand. I opened this stream like five times in different days and all I see is the same person playing the same game. <laughs> Boring. We are boring, right, I guys? Totally <laughs> so, guys, who just joined us? This is the uh, women's candidates finals. These two players, Leiting G, you see on the up screen video, and Tanjongi, you can see it down. Uh, they are the winners of Pool A and Pool B. They got the right to fight for the World Championship match. One of these two players will face Ju Wen Jun, that's the current women's world champion. And the tournament will happen in July. So we might have the same world women champion, Ju Wen Jun, or we might have new women's world champion. That's that's the question in the future. In a few months, we're going we're gonna to know about that. But uh, so far, Alexandra, what we have seen these five games has been incredible. Uh, I would I would say day three was like easy run for for all of us and for the players too because they made this draw. But rest of the games were so interesting and beautiful. What are your thoughts about all these uh, five games so far? What we have seen? Yes, they were accelerating. They were exciting games, and uh, um, even though I mean. The players demonstrated like uh, deep opening preparation, but somehow they managed to reach positions with a lot of uh, ideas uh, and uh, sometimes pretty unbalanced positions where mistakes are uh, very hard to avoid. And um, there were many uh, blunders, quite some blunders in this match. And of course, um, if when one of the players... Uh, uh, it's gonna prepare for her final match against Juven Jun. H3 and is on the board. She is. she is going, guys. You got it right. She predicted, and she is making it. Oh my God, Alexandra! This can be a knockdown for Tanjongi. 
Yes, well, it looks pretty sad, but you see, she has a plan. Now mm. at least she has a plan. King H1, Queen G1, mm. Queen G3. We discussed that a bad plan is better than no plan at all, right? Well, at least she knows how to protect uh, well, for the few next moves, uh, this pawn on H2. And she's happy with that. Of course, she is not uh, going to take on H3. She doesn't want to... Uh, like lose this game just yet although she understands i mean she's a very strong player she understands that her position is very close to be hopeless but okay she's saying she okay keeps to play. she keeps to cool uh and what she has doing here perfectly well tanjongi avoiding all the possible threats from late in g rook to f7 has been played by lei and this is move 28 12 more moves to go before the time increment. Uh, Tanjongi is well known to be capable to play very fast all the next moves, but unfortunately her position is so passive, her next moves are not so obvious. Oh, C4, here we go. Oh, finally, finally, yeah. Finally she realized that she needs to go forward, right? She needs to try to uh somehow put pressure on um, black's position okay now her knight is on e3 and we can say that she attacks the d5 uh, pawn well i mean who knows i mean i can show you some several lines where white uh, is going to win uh despite the fact that the position is pretty safe uh sad right now for white but okay uh, hold on, where is this uh, promised brilliancy? Little no, no, no it just I, I said that it's a brilliant move, but it, yeah, <laughs> the computer doesn't consider it to be brilliant because there were other good moves. I, I don't know what is the definition of brilliancy in computers um, way, but for us, it was a brilliant move. And uh, shall, maybe... we see, shall we see mm -hmm. the definition of the brilliant move? on the screen maybe uh, as i remember we need okay here we go an unex unexpected amazing move and we were expecting h3 so okay now it's, oh, <laughs> so if, if we expect the move, it, if we expect the move it shall not i mean it, it cannot be called brilliant <laughs> oh too bad for us because we're always expecting i mean brilliant moves right no, it should be something like extra unexpected thing to give you a hard heart attack alexandra very interesting question in the chat mm -hmm. um what what are her thoughts of playing Ju when june um whose thoughts what do you think about Ju and june just like her playing recently in the tournament which you just mentioned earlier i think that's the that's the question Ooh, well against how sure. you fun the match ah, well that's a rapid tournament but mm -hmm. yeah as i said uh that just indicates that uh Ju Win june is not out of form right she's uh preparing she's playing and probably maybe not some like um um classical over the board games internationally but definitely some training games and uh it's gonna be a very interesting match because if lei wins she is a worthy opponent. Uh, she's on her rise, despite the fact that she was almost her career was put on standby because of all these events in the last years. And um, despite the fact she's been preparing, she's very uh, looking very convincingly in this match. And uh, she's younger than Ju Win Jun, also quite an advantage. Uh, she might lack some experience, but we saw that in this case, in the case of this match, right, she um, didn't, um, uh, well, she di did manage to handle her nerves after this very dramatic uh, loss in the first game. She managed to win back to equalize the score and then keep, she kept pushing. Now she has a completely winning position. And again, if she converts it into a full point, uh, it's going to be an interesting match. I'm looking forward to this match. I'm looking forward to see this uh, Chinese clash. Mm, great, uh, two great players from China. And um, well, as exciting yeah, as ever. Yeah, China has a great history of uh, winning the Women's World Championship tournaments. And uh, 
uh, we can actually uh, pull it up on the screen to show that to our viewers. And here we have also Alexandra Grossman, your name, at uh, their uh, world champion. Um, there was for sure very exciting moments, Alexandra, for you. And uh, then uh, you and the other player who won was uh, Ho Yu Fan several times, Tan Zhonggi, we have here in this competition and Ju Wen Jun from China. And we have to also shout out to Anne Ushenina and Maria Muzuchuk from Ukraine to winning this competition. Right, yeah. So another match, another world championship match. We're having so many matches, right, this year. So first, uh, this final match of the women's candidates, which were actually expected to finish last year, but okay, due to some force majeure events, uh, it was postponed and now we're witnessing it uh, right now, um, right here. Then the world championship match between Nipomnishi and Dinglejen is about to start, what, in five days? Very, very soon. So, ah, I was a And we're not fan. forgetting chess boxing match as well. No, no, no. Uh, that's that's, that's Andrea another, yeah, of course. That's, that was the biggest clash for sure. Yes, that's <laughs> um, still waiting for announcements for revenges and for, but okay, at <laughs> least let's round. focus on chess only for the moment. <laughs> uh, just, but I'm sure it's going to be. Would you more consider recent. yourself to play in some chess? You chess know, the problem is it. I'm a very competitive person. Yeah. And but I just, I'm against any physical violence. And I consider, I mean, I, I know that there are some like people who respect uh, those marital arts and r different sports, uh, such as box, uh, karate, taekwondo, and all those kinds of things. But I'm just against physical violence. I cannot, I mean, I don't think uh, people should uh, fight like that. Intellectually, yes. But not with their fifth. Um, uh, I, I'm against it. That's why. I mean, I would love to compete in the way because I'm very competitive person. And you know, when I was watching this match, uh, this chess boxing match, I said, "Come on, but you cannot box like this." I mean, if you do it, you do it properly. I mean, uh, <laughs> I've never, of course, boxed in my life, but I just didn't like. The, I mean, the level <laughs> of boxing somehow I felt yeah, that something yeah, yeah, does yeah, not can... right. But anyway, Failed since it. I'm just, yeah. it's my principle in a way uh, that I'm against uh, uh, such sports and such um, encounters, if you wish, uh, then yeah, I don't consider it, unfortunately. But chess tennis, yes. Chess tennis, and you are actually playing chess tennis tournaments. I, I've heard of that. So I have seen some of the articles. Talking about the chess boxing, I totally feel what you just said. It was so hard for me to see, especially Alex, uh, Andrea and uh, Dina fighting because uh, it's, it's harder when you know people in person. And uh, then I was yeah, again, struggling for to, me it's sad Palestine, to Palestine. see that even women fight. Uh, it was just very hard for me. It was just, I like chess bars. It breaks my much. heart. Okay, yeah, it breaks yeah, my yeah, heart. Yeah, Let's yeah, put it me, this way. My heart started to breathe uh, to beat so fast that I had to walk a little bit to calm down. It was 5, 5 a.m. for me. And I don't know why I watched that <laughs> right away at the middle of the night. But yeah, I think I think uh, chess spectators love that box, chess boxing match. But you guys, today we don't have any Let's chess, see. Yeah, let's see some brutality match. on the chess board. There can be, I mean, chess can be pretty brutal just mm -hmm. another way right without using the physical power but using your mind and uh, just showing that ah you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna win this one mm -hmm. and that's exactly what can happen right now queen h4 is another brilliant well at least in my in my <laughs> oh, evaluation uh move by late in j keeping this pawn unprotected and showing um, why Alexandra, that... Alexandra, shall yes? we demonstrate one very crazy line? We should see one is, by yes. the way, on mm -hmm. the board. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we go there, C takes D5, Pawn takes D5, Knight takes D5. Rook C2, I just demonstrated it here. Yeah, uh, there mm -hmm. is this crazy thing like Queen to G4 with Queen G2 ideas. Uh, instead of uh, Rook C2? 
Yeah, probably there are tons of moves. Ah, you mean something here, like but... like something like a checkmate, right? Something yeah. very and bishop h two, or very close to it. Some yeah, so here you don't have oh, to. Can... Oh no, 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 knight f six. Bishop yeah. h two maybe right away. King h two. Well, I was thinking about that, but then king g three is possible. It still doesn't escape. It seems the king, but okay, we make it uh, more yeah. challenging for ourselves. Although probably rook g seven. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I, I thought that king h2, rook c6 is gonna checkmate, but okay. Rook f8, maybe first? Rook Instead of rook g7? Y yes. Not letting the king escape. Yeah, seems to be. Guess who, who suggested this move, chat? <laughs> Our producer, Vic, suggested it. <laughs> well done. It's actually the best move. Wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, I because. Love it. Because then See, teamwork the... is the best work, Alexandra. All of us exactly have... <laughs> because right now the uh, the rook is not only cutting the king or from the center, but it also protects this pawn. Right? It mm. seems to be crucial in this line. Checkmate. Actually, bishop... okay. Now I realize when I start talking, I realize that rook h three is a threat. Okay, back to the game. Uh, it's another. It's a completely different story, but I'm afraid with the same outcome. Uh, bishop c1, rook to g7. Okay, what does Lei have in mind for her next move? Does she want just to think to go for some kind of sacrifices? On yeah, G4 you start and okay. prepare mm -hmm. for the sacrifice. Maybe not right away, but to prepare it. That like again, yeah, you kind of feel, right? You feel that the position is starting to scream for it. So it's like a fruit that needs to be taken from a tree. Mm -hmm. It's uh, ready. Uh, maybe still, maybe, you know, some torture like that, just bringing one more piece into play or even consider it something crazy like e5, but you've got to be careful about such moves, of course, because they can backfire. Uh, the there can be also idea like bishop f4 to go after knight on e3, which holds the pawn on g4 and then just take the pawn. But then what? Yeah, then what? Do you take with the queen? Uh, How do you I break can through? take with the queen, I can take with the rook and get this rook on g2. And then? Then? If the question has been asked, I can play queen somewhere on e7 or d8, queen c7, and queen to h2 checkmate. Yeah, finally, <laughs> finally get to the square. Yeah, seems seems so hard to play with this rook being on g2. It's like you know, bone in your in your neck and you're gonna in your throat. Yeah. Um, very very nice position for Leiting G. She is having absolute joy to play this one. On the other hand, we have the other side here. Tanjongi desperately needs to save this game. Draw is also a good result here at this point for her. Four minutes for her to go. And this is move 30. Ten more moves to be played. Ten very, very important and very uh, hard move to make here because it seems like nothing is really changing the evaluation here. Queen to G1. Uh, have been played. She's guarding the g4 pawn, extra extra defense of this pawn. Yeah, but maybe your plan with bishop f4, bishop e3 is uh, like working, is as strong as ever because now after bishop takes e3, rook takes g4. Ah, they, that might be some kind of a trap. Queen takes g4 or something like, let's see. Uh, for example, like this, capturing on d5. And if you like carelessly uh do something like that then there might be queen g4 and i'll still the position not, is still, not helping right queen yeah, it's not two. helping queen g2 but okay oh, what to do i've tried my best and now look at this spawn chain but can you get through isn't it like oh a, looks it's almost beautiful. like it's a like a necklace on the board <laughs> the chain yeah but i'm wait I'm, i have I'm... a chain <laughs> Okay. This one okay. reminds me just to right. have it on the board. <laughs> right. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, shall we take a look what happens if rook trades and we go to the obstacle color bishop? But it will be a draw, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, you gotta check it out, but it might be. Also, okay, very always very hard to evaluate because black will try to get. Uh, with the king 
Mm -hmm. And somehow if white tries to protect the king's side, uh, are they going to be able to do so or not? Okay, well, that's a very interesting question, but it's rather rhetorical because, of course, it's never going to happen in the game. Mm -hmm. I think there are millions of ways to... Yeah, this is probably the worst scenario for letting G to go mm -hmm. to that end game and then try to struggle to find out the way to win. But very likely it's possible to win in that position as well. Right. Okay, well, nine moves to go for her. Position can not be better than that, hardly can. But still, right, some work needs to be done uh, um, in order to break through, in order yeah. to secure this point that she wishes uh, to do uh, mm -hmm. so desperately. And that's, yeah. uh, that can be a challenge because you understand that your position is completely winning but your opponent is not resigning for some reason and you mm -hmm. still need to find these moves and to make these moves and you know the moves that i like here is actually king h7 i like it with the idea to play rook g8 yeah bring the take on bring G4. another rook into the and, game yeah. and there obviously there will be some sort of um sacrifices uh also there is possibility to activate the light square bishop i don't know how well it works but bishop seven is bishop on the H. board mm -hmm. oh nice nice guess yeah. but it just nice looks case. so you know so positionally uh you want to bring this rook and rook f8 rook f4 rook uh takes g4 i mean it seems a little bit slow and artificial and king mm -hmm. h7, rook g8 seems so logical and easy to do. And again, white has no counter chances. Yes, she can take this pawn. Uh, black is going to take back and knight d5 is not possible. Actually, that's where this bishop starts to uh, play. Because after rook takes g4, if white takes with the queen, right, this bishop is here guarding the square and um, there is no mm -hmm. knight of six tricks. True, 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 true. So, uh, wow, from uh, from very beginning, it's like full the, uh, um, okay, 95 is not a move that we will see here. I was just a bit confused to see this line happening. Um, ah, it is happening. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I didn't wow. mean that. I just demonstrated that it's not working. But, okay. Anne was in such a desperate situation that... Uh, and what is her actually. plan after Rook G4? Uh, maybe resign. Maybe resigning can be the plan. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, just let's look at the, at the players because sometimes, you know, their face expressions can uh, tell us more about uh, things, I mean what's happening but yeah i think that somehow she just forgot about this bishop on the seven it was hidden behind those pawns for so long that yeah, yeah i would also i would also um give a stare let's say to wow my opponent. The, also... the engine suggests here the move for white after rook to g4 mm -hmm. queen to g3 that's yeah, exactly. Uh, well, but uh, yeah, we would all agree that it's very hard to believe. <laughs> and this is the only strong move here for white. Strong. <laughs> can we? Yeah, it's the only move that can, uh, keeps the game going, right? It's uh, that white is not being checkmated immediately, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what is the evaluation after that? Grandmaster That's... Arthur's connections in our tent. Chad, greetings to Arthur, says that resigning is my least favorite plan. Yeah, yeah, how many of us can be related to that feeling? Well, it's never too late to resign, right? So, I mean, once Stan resigns, the match is over. So what's the point of, uh, like, uh, uh, hurry of speeding up? and For so, yeah, me, I... resigning is a whole process because first I'm getting so red when I, I'm losing the game and I have to resign. Like, my whole face gets red. I can feel it because I'm burning and I have to cool down a little bit, like physically and emotionally, to stop the clock. And this happens to me all the time. I, don't, I, I can't help it. I just cannot help it. Do you also have some 
a special approach with that or uh, you don't really mind it, Alexandra, and you prefer to focus on the other game? I don't mind resigning. Oof, I hate resigning. That's, uh, I think we talked with you about, you know, being forced to answer a few questions after you just mm -hmm. resigned. And, uh, uh, well, I consider it to be a torture because I do need some time to calm down, to kind of get back to relatively normal, although this... A so basically, game. I have tortured you several times in our lives because <laughs> I'm think interviewing you're... you in some of the some of the tournaments uh, after the game. Yeah, but you, I think you usually nowadays uh, there are no press conferences after a loss game. So it used to be like this back in. 2010, yeah, I remember, yeah. 2011, when I was like playing my first series of Grand Prix and I <laughs> took several last places and it was like terrible, terrible. And uh, I was kind of forced to go to those press conferences. But now, okay, they're more, it's, uh, it's not a necessity if you lost. Uh, and... Uh, can resign be declined i imagine a player you know resigning is a no 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 no. please carry on carry on i, I want to checkmate you no 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 no, no. i oh, don't yeah. i i decline like uh, when people offer you a draw you decline and here you also have the right mm -hmm. to decline no i want to continue <laughs> yeah just imagine if you cannot if you can't resign well um rook to g4 and mm -hmm. What is she then, thinking? Why is she thinking for so long? What uh, she, she's what... going for that. Um, Arthur said that rook e4 is a tricky move, but so what happens after rook takes e4? Yeah, I was thinking about that. I mean, the idea is that exactly, and that's exactly what happened. So if you capture the queen. And then you capture here, then there is knight of six. And suddenly it's actually, it's not oh. lost for black, but it's it's not a win anymore. And so that's, uh, that's the idea. But yeah, it seems not to be working because after rook g1, there is queen takes f2. A very, very calm move. And yes, yeah, there is knight of six, but then you go back to h8 and your queen keeps this h4 square under control. And what's mm -hmm. worse, it, I mean, there's still a checkmate uh, threat in the air, right? Queen h2. And so I think that after, like, bishop of four, uh, black and uh, simply... Oh, oh, Alexandra, by the yes. way, queen of two is the only move that uh, Leighton uh, really? has to find here. If mm. the other moves, we might hear here dramatic changes. And she and is going for that, of course. It would, it cannot be otherwise. She made all these best moves. That's uh, what she was thinking about. recognized by us, maybe not by chess.com, but queen f2 is the final blow here in this position. Mm -hmm. And that's what she was thinking about before, you know, getting, before capturing on uh, g4. She asked herself, what, why did Tan play that, right? What uh, did she have in mind? She saw this idea. It's a beautiful idea with rook e4, uh, with this uh, multi cross or whatever it's called, right? When pieces are standing like this in uh, chess composition, I think there is a, um, well, there should be someone, there should be a king uh, in that case for this. But anyway, it's a very beautiful uh, like way. Uh, it's a beautiful trap. But what do we see? We see some kind of uh, mark. I, I hope to see like um, the brilliant move uh, mark, but no, it seems um, oh, it means for us, please. the only move. Yes. <laughs> Tanjongi is trying to play in her next move. She has four minutes on the clock. Not sure what to play. Oh, no, she's not actually playing. Oh, knight of My six, bad. I think. Uh, Alexandra, the other move. And bishop of four. Bishop to g f4 has been played to avoid the checkmate. Mm hmm. All right. Okay, I'm waiting for some, you know, some ideas such as uh, rook c2, bishop d6, and then queen g2. Is it working here? Do you want to see something really fancy here after bishop f4? Uh, it's not working. Checkmate is oh. Come on. I, I blundered the mate. Okay, well done me. Okay, guys, that's how you lose this game. You don't want to lose this game. Alexandra, a little yes. bit up. Rook, bring this rook on c1. That's the winning move here. Incredible move, which wow. actually is hanging two wait, ways. Wait, wait. But can't I just take? 
And then if we have a brilliant move, maybe yeah, this yeah, is yeah, our no, brilliant no, but thing. Yeah, I just want to show a less brilliant <laughs> way. Isn't it winning? Just as simple as that, no? Just capturing on f4 and playing rook c1, that I wanted to say. Of course, I mean, your move is just, I mean, you were just so... Okay. We were looking for You're brilliance. hunting for this brilliant move, right? You wanted to make it. I mean, you remember this uh, yeah. call. It is and... so beautiful way to win the candidates tournament. If Exactly, because now it's like this rook is... Pint. There is no rook g8, that I blundered uh, just a second ago. And the bishop, we can also say that it's pinned because there is a queen uh, takes h2 behind it. And, well, yeah, that's definitely a, a very nice move to finish uh, this match with. But as I said, uh, ah, well, after bishop takes a 4 the problem is that there is knight takes a 4 and um, uh, hold on, hold on, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. I have an idea. Sorry to okay. interrupt you. Yes. The chat is going rook c1, rook queen to g2. Both ways are winning. Maybe I queen think g2. It's now exactly. time for another prediction. Queen g2 would be your preferences, okay. guys, or rook to c1. I would choose rook c1. I guess you will choose rook queen to g2. Queen g2, yeah. I would okay, just, no, see. I would just uh, not consider rook c1. That would be my problem. You know, if I mm. see uh, those ideas with queen g2, I would be so focused on uh, calculating them and as soon as i see them work i will like uh, play them on i mean queen g2 they like play rook to c1 for great content for levy <laughs> for content let's play rook to c1 uh, queen g2 I... is also no it's, it's such a powerful game from black's uh, side that it's gonna be analyzed and it's gonna be on all those channels anyway securing your way for a world championship match with a victory with black. I mean, such a powerful performance. Either way, either way, bishop, queen g2, or this brilliant rook c1, uh, mm. I think. Uh, We'll yeah, do. let's now let's now have focus on the players. We gonna we gonna see we gonna see the truth. We need the full screen right now. Just don't play rook c two. Don't make the same <laughs> blunder as I oh, did yeah. because there is a, a checkmate coming up uh, from white side, and of course that's definitely what you should avoid. All right, all right. Look at this, letting the totally feels this might be the end of the game we might not even reach to move 40 and game can resume before that too many possibilities there can be crazy fancy ideas rook c1 queen g2 or a simple move like bishop to f4 too much to calculate how much time she has alexandra i just cannot see oh, okay Oof, seven minutes enough. Not enough, not enough. I mean, for, I mean, enough to find all this really. So, you know, I was just considering, I was thinking that since this a brilliant move request, ah, and here it goes, here it goes. Sorry, guys, I spoiled the moment for you, but just Rook C1 was too brilliant. If there no, is Queen G2 Queen G has happened, Queen 2 G2 has happened. Well, that's that's your move, Alexandra. Yeah. No, Rook C1. I'm sure Rook C1 would be the brilliant move recognized by chess.com, but this is good enough to win the match. Letting Xi now trading all the pieces. And, and that's it! Resignation! That's oh, wow. it! Letting Xi, the winner of the 2023 candidates finals. She has been through a lot of competition, a lot of opponents. In pool A, she beat Muzichuk sisters first, Moria, then Anna. She got into the finals against Tan Zhongyi, and she wins the competition a round before. Congratulations to Lei Tingzhi and her supporters on the yeah, other side looked, of the board. We have Tan Zhongyi, Alexand Alexandra, and this is for sure very tough for her, but she also showed great play at Pool B. She won convincingly that pool against uh, Katerina Lachno and then Alexandra Goreczkina. And we can we can say that she was a little bit unlucky in this match. What are your thoughts as the tournament is over now? No, I don't agree with luck. I mean, I do, you know, I'm a professional chess player myself still, kind of hanging there. And I do, I'm a strong supporter of the side where we say that luck should be deserved. It's not for nothing if you get lucky in a tournament, in a match, in a game. Try to to get lucky against those players. Try to do it yourself if you think it's so easy. And it's such a powerful performance by Lei. I'm impressed with this last game. Like mm -hmm. outplay. Let's take a opponent. take a look once again uh, and uh, point out the the key points here uh, in this game. 
Yes, outplaying your opponent so effortlessly uh, with white pieces. Yeah, let's uh, have a look one more time to this game that became the final point, the final exclamation mark, I would even say, for Lei in this uh, her uh, journey for the World Championship crown. D4, D5, Knight F3, Knight F6. It started with a quite symmetrical move order, right? You would not expect to see such a dominance by black pieces after uh, this quiet opening. But we talked with you that it's like um, Tan gave a chance for Lei to be white in this game, right? Even though she had this extra tempo, or semi-tempo, uh, but it looks like she's actually playing black. And uh, Lei opted for a very, uh, well, quite a fresh idea, quite a fresh setup, g6, castle, bishop g7, that felt like a trap, especially now, considering this result, right, that we saw. It looks like a trap. I mean, it's so tempting to play bishop a3, right, Katie? But Yes, exactly. That I had a feeling that it was obviously the trap. But when I saw g6 move first, I was really surprised. And I could never imagine a move like that could be working. What? With a good preparation that Lei Tingji clearly had in this game, it is demonstrated that moves like that are actually possible. And you can uh, call it as a trap because after bishop to a3 that uh, uh, Tanjongi just played, Lei Tingji went for the center, 94, f5 next move. And from this moment, Alexandra, she have made all the precise moves, all the good moves to attack the white's king and just shut down all white's pieces. So I can just count it a combo for good preparation and great skills that Lei Tingji has. Yeah, exactly. And have a look what later happened in that game. Actually, we discussed that there was one game, like the very first game that we managed to find in the database, and Katie mentioned it. It was a game by the great Tigran Petrosian, who was playing white, and he probably felt that something might go wrong, you know? And he jumped immediately for this bishop b5, bishop c6, followed by c4 plan or actually didn't he he played c3 right but then he played bishop b5 bishop takes c6 trying to get the knight on e5 and trying not to give black time to start this attack that doesn't seem so dangerous at this point but look what actually happened in the game c3 like the, the petrosan style move uh, supporting the center, bishop d7, and here we felt as it was moment actually to switch back to this plan with c4, and thanks to some tactical tricks, it might have been possible to start actually this attack in the center, because, Katie, what happened after queen c2? Oh, after queen c2, things just changed dramatically for uh, Tanjongi. Lei responded with rook to c8. The threat is to take the pawn on d4. That's a serious threat. Tanjongi right away responded with queen to b2. And you guys, you need to remember this queen on b2 because it was suffering big time. You can see all the white pieces, all these pieces stuck together. And this gives the sign to Lei Tingji that now it's time to play on the king side. And she goes here the great move and starts to play on the king side with g5, which is unstoppable plan. Exactly. G5 looks so powerful. And now, you know, this when I highlighted this pieces, it reminded me of this um, children's uh, game that we used to play when we were like younger. It's called Corners. And in that game, you needed, you started with your pieces in the corner and you needed to somehow shuffle them to the other part of the board faster than your opponent uh, does. And here, if it was, you know, this game, White would win it easily by playing Bishop C2 and Rook C1. But alas, uh, the players for playing chess so g5 indeed a very powerful way of attacking knight f to d2 and here the position screamed screamed for the sacrifice on e4 every single move we were considering it uh taking with the bishop with a knight even with the rook in some lines but unfortunately 
for Tanjung, okay, for us commentators, of course, it's very easy to sacrifice other players' pieces, right? We tend to do it uh, very, uh, like, we like to do it, but Tan, it was a crucial game for her. And probably here, she didn't feel that it was still this position and these drastic measures are to be taken. And Bishop takes e4 might be might be like the last moment to sacrifice here because after bishop f1 what yeah, was the plan bishop f1 here the best move according to the engine was h5 to go right away into the king side attack and not to be scared at all of king being on e8 because basically there's no way to open up the center uh but here late g played queen to f6 and later in two moves we just understood her plan was actually very nice she is pointing on f2 pawn and now the natural move knight to d2 can be just cutting queen from b2 to control this one uh and the move like bishop to f8 bishop f8 rook to f8 can right away attack the pawn on f2 very likely that was the late uh, letting just plan here, uh, uh, which just happened in the game too. But instead of knight to d2, Tan Jong decided to bring the queen on e2, bring the queen in the center where it can be more uh, flexible to control the king side and the queen side as well. And after this move, queen to e2, now the pawn is hanging on g4, so h5 is the uh is the move that late has played and after knight to d2 letting the here decided to trade dark square bishops and here was another surprise for Tan from tanjongi instead of taking this bishop off the board she decided to bring it back on b2 to be a little bit passive but at least to guard the pawn on c3 and d4 in the center yeah and i think that's the last mistake the last mistake of the game. The position, surprisingly, is already pretty unpleasant for white. Uh, but when you uh, end up in a very passive position, usually it's a good idea to exchange as many pieces as possible. Because in order to like move your pieces around, you need space. If you don't have space, fewer pieces you have on the board, better chances for you to survive. And Tanke here, the moves that she made, it's definitely for me. It's the last blunder of the game. It's not the tactical blunder. It's she's not losing any material, but it's just the game over. Bishop b2, retreating her bishop to b2, putting it behind those pawns. And what's worse, she's letting her opponent's bishop onto d6, thus putting even more pressure on the king side. And after rook a to d1, we discuss some brilliant lines with g3. That might have been winning, but after that you will still need and require to find more uh, brilliant moves such as e3. Uh, while Lei preferred to play it positionally, she castled. And yeah, after... and also Alexandra, it's worth to mention that this is not just a castle, but she was having a, a huge threat here if we demonstrate any pass move here let's say c4 black plan to sacrifice the bishop bishop to h2 very powerful move king h2 queen to h4 forcing this king to go back on g1 and now we have this rook sacrifice brilliant move rook to f2 queen f2 and g3 game is over as black will uh checkmate white's king after queen h2 Exactly, so quite a poisonous way, but also such a great positional approach. And I like I like it so much when your powerful play kind of unites, you know, everything. Tactics, strategic, I mean, everything like works and you demonstrate, you kind of outplay your opponent in every single field. Tactically, positionally, in... And here, look at this. Look at this moment. I mean, G3 and the maneuvers that followed, maneuvers that Lay picked uh, here and uh, that brought her game, like to uh, that brought herself to the World Championship match, is amazing. Like her knight's maneuvers that followed, just really a demonstration. You can put it in uh, uh, manuals of positional play. White weakened those white squares. White cannot. White does not have any counterplay, right? And Black has takes all the time she needs. And little by little, move by move, but she brings her knight to f3, where it's gonna. It's gonna be very, very strong. 
And that's yeah. exactly how the game continued. Exactly, and this was the one of the last moments where Tanjongi could still complicate the position instead of bishop to g2, which allows black to fully just uh, uh, control the board. But here, white could play h3 to undermine the pawn on g4 or even h4 to control g5 square and knight would not come there. And this could keep the game on uh, a bit longer. But she went instead bishop to g2 that allowed black to get the knight on f7 and later on g5. And at this point, Leiting G was blitzing out all these moves because she was certain that it was winning position after knight to f3, white is forced to take. And in this pawn structure, white is forced to play queen to f1 to keep the pieces together. And black's plan is pretty simple. Right, h4 followed by h3, right? And of course, white cannot take on h3 because uh, the h file will be open and there is no way to protect this pawn on h2. So white just kept waiting and uh, black improved her position to the maximum. And in the final tactical, um, tactical battle, let's put it this way, since black's position is so dominant, it's not surprising that black is having everything under control but nevertheless, there was a point where Black needed to make the only move. So Tan tried her last chance to trap her opponent, to complicate things. But unfortunately, it was not enough because here Black finished the game with a few precise moves. Yeah, that's right. Starting with Queen to F2, only move here to uh, uh, get... A point out of this game attacking on h2 square threatening checkmate white had to play bishop to f4 to stop this checkmate and at this point there were a lot of ways to win the game starting with fancy rook to c1 uh which is a rook sacrifice but if you take with the rook you will drop the checkmate on g2 if you take with the bishop then you will be checkmated on h2 and on the other hand, you are pretty much paralyzed here because then the threat is to queen g2, rook g1, queen g1 checkmate, a lot of ways to checkmate white's king. Instead of this, letting g choose the most practical way where black has no choice but to accept the challenge and take queen g2, rook g2. And then after bishop to f4, we had resignation by Tanjongi because there was no way to avoid rook to c1 and g1 promotion of the pawn. Yes, what a game, what a performance by Lei, not only in this game, but throughout the match, she was the one pressing. But of course, Tan can disappoint it uh, since even though her uh, opponent was pressing very hard, but she usually kept her calm and got her chances. That, alas, she didn't convert. And that what made uh, this uh, match as a dream come true for Lei. She won it. She secured the victory only after five games, not needing to play the sixth game, not needing to play the tie break, three and a half to one and a half. What a devastating victory. And Lei should yeah, be that's preparing. Right. Also, Alexandra, she lost the first game with black pieces. She was the one who was pressing the most, but the move, the blunder she made on the last two seconds on the clock, clock was crucial and also was kind of wake up call for her because ever since that game, she has not lost and she won three games in a row and made one drawing the game three. That was enough to uh, get the uh, get the right to go to the World Championship match. And you guys, this is a bracket of the Women's Candidates Tournament, which has been a long run, Alexandra. We also see your name here. You have played in Pool B. Uh, Leiting Ji uh, first uh, played against Maria Muzicuk, then Anna Muzicuk won those two matches. And then she went to the finals against Han Zhongi and the final match against uh, Ju Wenjun will come up on July the 3rd this year, guys. This is going to be the Women's World Championship match. Cannot wait to see that. 
Yes, indeed, Katie. Well, that was exciting tournament, a very long tournament indeed. But uh, the World Championship match is soon to be played in less than three months. It's going to start. And then the, the, the candidates tournament, a new candidates tournament <laughs> 2024 is also not so far away. But before the World Championship, the Women's World Championship match, we're going to witness the overall, right? The Men's World Championship match where Yang Nipomnishi is going to play against Dean Plesh Zheng, are we going to have the situation with two world champions from China? What do you think, Kathy? Oh, that's actually very, very possible. Like, we don't know yet. So we will know the answer uh, very soon in just one month from, from starting next day. So that's a really good question and open to a lot of speculations. Now it's time to call it a tournament, call it a day, and end this tournament. Unfortunately, it resumed the day before. We wanted to see even tie breaks to have more fun. But anyways, Lacing she truly deserves uh, to be in the final of the World Championship match. And congratulations once again. Big thanks, Alexandra, for all these incredible lines that you were showing us and the tactical motives and positional struggles and your comments. Uh, I'm sure our chat on YouTube and Twitch appreciate that big time. Also, big thanks to our chess.com team putting this show together. Guys, you might be sad that this event is, is finished because I'm sure it was a lot of fun for you as it was for us. But the fun continues on the channel. In a few hours, it will be Chessable Masters, more chess games, more strong players, and this is never ending circle of the chess tournaments. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for being here all the time with us and see you in the next future. Bye bye. Yes. Thank you, Cassie. The pleasure was mine. And yeah, just more chess, more chess. And I do hope that uh, this feeling that you got today, and that you mentioned, that you feel like playing chess, you know, spectators can relate to. And I do hope uh, to see them playing chess. And yeah, 2023 Chess Able Masters soon. Let's 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 check it out. Let's play chess. Thank you, everyone, and um, take care. Play chess. See you. Bye bye.